Okay, guys, it looks like we are live for this incredibly exciting debate. I've been pumped for this for a couple of weeks before we announced it and, and set it up. We've got Bill Morgan here, who's no stranger to this channel, uh, as well as Cygnus Ustis. I hope I said that right. Uh, but we've got an interesting debate for you tonight. I'm going to go over the format real quick because it is slightly different than usual, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Also, I apologize for our late start, guys. We had uh, a few technical difficulties, but everything looks good now. So uh, and if you guys can uh, periodically give us some updates in terms of how the uh, audio video is going, uh, let us know. This is going to be a lot of fun. Tag uh, myself or Praise I Am with your questions because we're going to be having a Q&A at the end of this. So format for tonight is going to be 15-minute opening statement from Bill. Okay, followed by a 20 minute uh, opening and rebuttal, combination of both by Cygnus, and then a rebuttal from Bill of 10 minutes, and then a rebuttal from Cygnus of five, followed by two rounds of cross examination, five minutes each, okay, where the debaters are going to be asking each other uh, questions, firing questions at each other, then a closing statement of five, and then the audience QA. So please. Tag me with your questions. We're debating evidence for the existence of God. Uh, and uh, Bill's going to be starting because he is the affirmative. Um, anyways, enough for me. Before we get into the opening statements, though, why don't we, why don't we break the ice um, and kind of introduce ourselves, Bill and Cygnus. Uh, Cygnus, since this is your first time here, thanks for giving us your time for tonight's sure, important debate. Uh, a, a couple things about, about yourself, you know, who you are. Uh, maybe if you have a channel, you can advertise your channel. Anything you'd like. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> Boy, I don't have any channel or anything to advertise. and uh, Maybe I'm not that interesting a person. Um, I, I work in information technology. I'm just interested in science as a lay person. Uh, I'm also interested in uh, uh, logic, uh, uh, skeptical thinking, um, philosophy. Um, back before COVID, I participated you know, fairly frequently in a uh, local philosophy club in, in our capital city and um, gave some uh, gave a couple presentations on philosophy of science. Um, and that's uh, about it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Good enough. Awesome. I, I appreciate that introduction. We're excited to have you on. And uh, we're excited to hopefully have you on again in the future, too, for a variety of topics and, and debate. So, Bill. As always, thanks so much for being here. I feel like we just had you, and, and it's always a pleasure. So, Bill, uh, you are on mute, brother. So just make sure you unmute yourself. And once again, thanks for being here. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here again. I think this is maybe my ninth debate. And I've been a mechanical engineer for about 37 years. And for many years of my life, I was an atheist. That's all I was taught, and I believed what I was taught. But when I tested it, I had uh, I would say science led me to believe there is a designer and a creator. And so I fully respect and understand people who disagree with me and uh, treat them with kindness and dignity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate uh, I appreciate that opening statement. So uh, without further ado, why don't we get into our opening statements? Uh, we are using OBS tonight, so we're trying a, a different um, format for tonight. So we've got praise, praise. Uh, when you guys need to screen share anything, uh, let us know, and we'll make sure praise does does so. So I imagine you have some slides, Bill, that we can that we can get going for you. Okay, let's see. Oh, trying to share here. Sorry about this, everybody. Okay. There it is. It's a little bit different than the last one. It says stop sharing, but I'm not sharing yet. Oh, wow. You're good to go. You're good to go. Well, I'm trying to I'm find my PowerPoint. It. I'm not seeing it on the YouTube stream. Hang on. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Click on share. Oh, that's okay. I, I um, right. Yeah. It looks like you're shared now, Bill. So now you just have to uh, go to your actual PowerPoint. I can, oh, I can see the, uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay, it. can you see that? I can, can see, see it. Uh, Cygnus, can I, you see it okay? I can't see it on my – I can see it on my phone, but I can't see it on the YouTube stream. Praise? Oh, there 
There we go. I think I just need to refresh my screen. Let me see. And, and there's YouTube probably screen. a bit yeah, of a, a lag. I can see it on the YouTube screen. Yeah. We're good. Awesome. Okay. Can, we're the good to go then. Uh, Bill? can the audience see it standing? Yes, they can. Yes. And because we're using you. OBS tonight, and because because we're using OBS tonight, there's probably going to be a 10 second lag or so behind. So we're good to go now. I'm going to start your timer, Bill, uh, when you're ready. And I'll give you a one minute warning when you hit the 14 minute mark. But I understand you guys are timing yourselves as well. I'll just help you out a little bit there. So, Bill, whenever you're ready, the floor is your yours. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you again. There's my YouTube channel. I don't really care about likes or things like that, but I just like to uh, share what I believe to be truth and glorify God. And I hope you check out my channel. People can call me or email if they want as well. Okay. Evidence for the existence of God. That's what the topic of the debate is. The year is 1978. The place. Wiltshire, England. There's a startling discovery. What is that? Oh my goodness, those are crop circles. Crop circles showed up in England in the late 1970s where farmers' fields had mysterious patterns in them. A crop circle debate breaks out. Some people argued that aliens made the crop circles. Some people argued, no, it wasn't aliens, it was humans. But nobody was making the argument that they were a result of time, nature, and chance. This was a crop circle in England near Stonehenge. Here's a comment from LiveScience.com. This one unmistakably demonstrated intelligence. The only question was whether the intelligence was terrestrial or extraterrestrial. Nobody was arguing about natural processes. So question for sickness. Do you agree that this is unmistakably the result of intelligence? I believe it is. Another question for Cygnus. Do you believe the human digestive system is unmistakably the result of intelligence? What about the circulatory system? What about the nervous system? I believe that's unmistakably the result of intelligence. The muscular system, that is not a picture of me, but it, it's a pretty buffed guy with a lot of muscles, and he believes it's the result of intelligence, and so do I. It's a design. So. Question for Cygnus, which one of these is the simplest? Which one is the least functional? Nobody argues about the crop circles, but people argue about the human body, and I believe they're not being rational and logical in thinking that the human body is the result of natural processes. So some starting evidence for the existence of God, the human body. And there's 8 billion of them, so there's 8 billion pieces of evidence for the existence of God. Now, God doesn't make things. God makes systems. Systems are composed of many essential elements to make the whole thing work. Many essential elements. The human body is a system. The circulatory system is a system. The heart is a system. The tissue is a system. The cells are a system. The molecules are a system. The atoms are a system. Systems cannot evolve by a step-by-step -step process. There's too many components needed. Here's a simple question regarding the atom. What appeared first? Protons, neutrons, electrons? And if they appeared, what made them all come together and make atoms? So more evidence for the existence of God, the atom. Every atom in the universe, I believe, is a design. There are 10 to the 80th atoms in the universe. So that's 10 to the 80th pieces of evidence for the existence of God. Living systems are a house of cards. One little thing goes wrong, the whole body falls apart and possibly dies. Now, some people would argue, hey, you can't prove the human body's a design. And is he correct? Well, let's talk about what is a design. Google definition, a design is the result of a plan, something intentional. Definition, a chance, not planned. Suppose you come up your driveway and you see 15 stones all over the place like this. Would you argue it's the result of design or chance? You would probably think chance, but you can't be sure because you weren't there. So you walk up your driveway the next day and you see this. You see six stones in a pretty straight line. Now you would say, hey, that looks like a design. 
but could you be 100% sure? No, you could be 99% sure, 1% faith that it's a design. You can't be 100% sure because you weren't there. Suppose you walk up your driveway and you see this, 150 stones in a circle. What would you think, designer chance? Well, that's more complex than six stones in a straight line. You might say, I'm 99.999% sure that's a design, but you can't be sure because you weren't there. There's a little bit of faith. So my next question is, what's more complex, stones in a circle or the human eye? Cygnus, would you argue that the stones happen by chance? Probably not. But you are arguing that the human eye happened by chance? I ask you to examine why you would say that. I believe they're both the result of design. Next question for sickness. Suppose you were placed in charge of an important project. You could hire everybody on the planet. You could hire all 8 billion people and they'll be working for you on your project. You have unlimited money, trillions upon trillions of dollars. No limit on money. You could use every laboratory in the world. Could you, sickness, and every person on earth design and build a living dog? This might sound like a childish question. I think it's a really good question. Could every brilliant person on this planet working hard design and build a living dog? Dogs are a system. I propose humans could never build a living dog. But let's look at some details. Suppose you were assigned a component of this system and it's assigned based upon the first letter of your last name and you're you, so let's see, where's the U on this? Oh, there it is, the urethra. Let's talk about the urethra in a dog. The urethra is something people don't talk about too much, but it carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. There's a beautiful diagram of it. Cygnus, could you design a flexible pipe with the proper material, diameter, wall thickness, support, and valving. It's not that easy to design piping, but we have 60,000 miles of blood vessels of piping that are properly designed. But right now we're talking about the urethra. Could you design the urethra sickness? Let's talk about valving design details. I think this is really cool. Let's just talk about dogs. Dogs build up urine all day long and it's in their bladder but there's a valve that keeps it in the bladder. It's called a urethral sphincter. Now, the urethral sphincter keeps the urine in the bladder until it's outside on the lawn, hopefully, and it can release it. Now, Cygnus, if you owned a dog, aren't you glad it's got a urethral sphincter? But could the dog and you survive without it? Absolutely. I believe God not only created things essential to life, God created things that are beneficial to life. If you had a dog and it didn't have the urethral sphincter, you'd have a big mess on your hands and you might not like that dog pissing all over your house all day long. So he's a God of details and a great designer. Now, males and females are different. Your design has to account for this. There's the male dog. There's the female dog. They have different lengths of the urethra. Okay, the male urethra is longer. We won't get in the details. I don't want uh, standing for truth that loses PG rating. But just think of the detail. The length of the urethra is perfect. It's not too long. It's not too short. As an engineer, you got to think of every detail like this. The urethra is beautifully designed. Now, the male urethra not only carries urine, but it carries semen. Okay, don't worry, this won't get x-rated, but the male urethra carries urine and semen. Cygnus, could you design a system that does this? I love this, and it's a blessing to do these debates because I learned stuff like this. Uric acid kills sperm, and they both use the urethra. You need a design to prevent the uric acid from killing the sperm. So what's the solution? God came up with a solution. The bulbo-urethral glands, okay, the bulbo-urethral glands. Uh, humans have this, dogs have it, this is what they do. I love it. These glands secrete glycoproteins. What do the glycoproteins do? Three essential functions for life. 
One thing they do is they lubricate the urethra for less friction so the sperms don't get exhausted doing their thing. The second thing, it expels the deadly urine that would kill the sperm. And here's my favorite, buckle your seatbelts. The secretion is alkaline. It neutralizes the uric acid. I think God is worthy to be believed in and praised because of these. Okay. Evidence for God, the bobo urethral glands, and there's millions more in the dog. Fact, dogs need ureth their urethra for urination and for reproduction. But what evolved first, Cygnus? Did the urination system evolve first and then the reproductive system? Well, the dogs aren't going to live too long and breed, are they? You're not going to have dogs anymore. Or did the reproductive system evolve first and then the urinary? The dogs are going to die of infection and disease? Or do they both magically evolve at the same time, along with the nervous system, the circulatory, digestive, immune, respiratory, and muscular? I believe they were designed by a God with an IQ of infinity. He made the urinary system, the reproductive system, muscular, digestive, all at once. That's how systems work. Systems need everything to work. And don't forget, if you mess up your design, if the, on the urethra, the whole dog dies. Everything needs to work. That's how engineering works. That's how living things work. That's how systems work. Another question, Sickness. If you, and you are a smart guy, I'm, I'm not uh, saying you're not. If you could not build the urethra with your high IQ, how could nature with an IQ of zero make the urethra, pushing chemicals and uh, material around? More evidence for the existence of God. How did matter and energy originate? What is your best explanation? Now, matter and energy, the first law of thermodynamics teaches matter and energy is neither created nor destroyed. Translation, matter and energy does not poof from nothing by natural means. What is your best explanation where it came from? I'm not asking if you know. I'm asking for your best explanation. This is my college textbook from many, many, many years ago. The authors see the second law of thermodynamics as man's description of the prior and continuing work of a creator who also holds the answer to the future and destiny of man in the universe. These are two authors of a thermodynamics book. And please note, I'm not asking if you know, I'm asking for your best explanation. Here's a nightmare of a question if I were an atheist. How did life originate, Cygnus? What is your best explanation? Do you believe non-living matter and energy mixed together by natural means and started life? You can believe that if you want, but don't call it science because the law of biogenesis and the cell theory falsify this. Now, life also has incredible information in the genetic code. Information theory teaches information only comes from intelligence. The evidence is right there before us. So I propose every living thing is evidence for the existence of God. Once again, I'm not asking you if you know, I'm asking for your best explanation. Now, atheists get giddy talking about brilliant people intelligently designing ways to make amino acids in a laboratory. We've all heard of the Miller-Urey experiment. Big deal. Even if they could make amino acids, they're not the right type. They need to be left-handed, but they're making right-handed amino acids. Big deal. They're not making proteins. They're getting excited about nothing. But I'll show you how generous I am. I will give you for free amino acids proteins, carbohydrates, fats, cells, organs, blood. I'm so generous. I will give you a living, or I'm sorry, a dead dog. A dead dog has all the organs, cells, tissue, amino acids it needs, but it's dead. Bring it back to life. You can't do it. Now suppose non-living matter did wiggle, jiggle, and giggle and become a living thing. That'd be a miracle. And it's saying, I'm alive, I'm alive. What does it need to do to survive? got to be able to metabolize, reproduce, respond to stimuli, move, even if you could create the first life. If it can't metabolize, reproduce, respond to stimuli, or move, it's not going to go anywhere. So the position that God exists agrees with the first law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics, conservation of mass energy, the law of biogenesis, the cell theory, everything we see in nature as a design. The position you have just that, over a minute, Bill, just over a minute. I got it. The position that God does not exist 
disagrees with laws of thermodynamics, laws of biogenesis, etc. So my arguments again, the matter of origin of matter and energy, origin of life, the genetic code, design, systems, dogs, urethras, every cell is evidence for the existence of God. Louis Pasteur, he knew a thing or two about science. The more I study nature, the more I stand amazed at the work of the creator. Science brings men nearer to God. Everybody's heard of Albert Einstein. Everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior and one in the face in which our modest powers must feel humble. Isaac Newton, this is my last one. This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intellect and powerful being. This being governs all things, not as the soul of the world, but as the Lord overall. The end. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. Bill, just on time. Just on time. Thank you so much. That was 15 minutes. Uh, we've got a ton of good questions and super chats flying in. Guys, thanks so much for uh, all the super chats and support. You guys are the life and blood of this channel. So God bless you. Uh, we've already got a, a very lively audience, over 60, 65 people in here. So uh, this is great. Uh, why don't we hand it over to Cygnus. Cygnus for his opening statement and rebuttal all in one. So Cygnus, you have 20 minutes. And okay. uh, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, you sound you good. So uh, let me talk briefly about how this debate came about. Um, I responded uh, with some criticisms of uh, one of Bill's uh, videos. And um, instead of actually responding to my criticisms, he challenged me to a debate, uh, which I thought was kind of odd because he just didn't say a debate about this, debate about, debate about that. He just said, I will debate you. Okay, so I suggested, well, let's debate um, whether unicorns exist, and you can take the pro and I'll take the con. I think that was the topic. Now, of course, that didn't go over well. So I looked, do I, I thought, do I really want to debate this guy? And I looked at a couple of his uh, videos, a couple of his uh, debates, and I thought, yeah, sure, I'll debate him. What I noticed was that um, most of his debates, if not all of them, and, and frankly, too many of the debates I'm seeing online these days are not Oxford style debates where you have a, you know, a resolution that's put forward that one person, one side defends and the other tries to uh, re re uh, refute. Uh, his debates were all things like uh, uh, creationism versus evolution. And as I watched them consistently, consistently, people ended up talking past each other. And more importantly, Bill ended up just peppering the evolutionist with challenges to explain this, explain that, uh, biology doesn't know this, or sometimes just, I don't believe that. What he never did was actually supply any evidence, positive evidence for his own beliefs, ever. So I actually put forth two topics to Bill that were Oxford style, where um, there was a, a, a positive assertion, and one side would uh, defend it, and the other side would try to refute it. And Bill chose the first one that I uh, uh, proposed, which was evidence for God, because I wanted to see Bill actually put forth evidence for God. He agreed to that. We started setting things up. Then later I got an email message from him saying, uh, which mentioned that the topic would be creation versus evolution. I said, no, 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 no. That is not what we agreed on. We agreed that you were going to supply evidence for God. He said, oh, my bad. Just a mistake. You know, uh, you know we'll, we'll call it evidence for God. Well, to my disappointment, Bill has like reverted back to just trying to say, you don't know this, you don't know that, but I believe this and I believe that. Bill presented no positive evidence for his own beliefs. So let's take a look at what these standards of evidence would be. Uh, I can think of a couple of uh, standards of evidence, uh, scientific evidence, of course. And as a matter of fact, Bill has said, quote, my foundation for faith is scientific and empirical. So that suggests that he's willing to subject his beliefs to scientific and empirical tests. Evidence is observable facts more likely to be true under hypothesis than not. So in order for anything that Bill says to qualify as scientific evidence, he has to demonstrate that it is observable, 
and that it is more likely to be true under his, his hypothesis than not. The problem is that anything is possible under the God hypothesis. He can simply hand wave and say, that's the way God did it. So I think he needs to be held to a higher standard. He needs to say, this is a, there's a reason why we'd expect God to do it this way. Because otherwise, uh, he, he's really not proving anything. Uh, it's been said that a theory that explains everything explains nothing. <sighs> Let me make this clear. It is not my job here to defend evolution or cosmology, or any other science, okay? That is not the point of this debate. That was the point of other debates. I'd be willing to have another debate with Bill where I actually defend a proposition, but that is not the point of this, this debate, even though he's trying to make it that way again. Given that, I am going to be avoiding all of his challenges to evolution in our openings and in rebuttals, in our openings and rebuttals. All his challenges explain this, explain that, because this is the time when we're talking about evidence for God and does it qualify? Nevertheless, we're gonna have a cross-examination time and that time is Bill's time, and his free time. He can ask me those questions during that time and I will do my best to answer them whether or not they are relevant to the topic. So we're talking about the evidence for God and glaringly absent from Bill's introduction or his opening was any definition of God, and he defining the qualities of God. So I don't even know how he goes about saying here's evidence that supports uh, the existence of God when he hasn't even said what God is. He's defining a ghost. I hope at some point he's going to actually define the qualities of God and then provide evidence that those that a being with those qualities exists. Well, what are some standards of evidence? The the most obvious one, and I think the one that Bill would agree is the one he has a responsibility to try to prove, is scientific. Scientific. Again, Bill has said, my foundation for faith is scientific and empirical. And, and uh, so I want to see some scientific empirical evidence from Bill. There's other, other standards of evidence as well. There's legal evidence and there's historical evidence. And if you know, Bill wants to kind of bring those things up, we can discuss them at that time, but in none of Bill's debates have I seen him address any historical evidence for God or for Jesus or anything like that. So we won't go into that too much. So I'd like to hold Bill to two standards. One is the standard of, there's the scientific standard of evidence. And the other is Bill Morgan's own standard of evidence, because I don't think if Bill Morgan can meet his own standard of evidence, okay, then he should not inflict that or impose that standard of, of evidence on his uh, debate opponents. So for instance, Bill has said, has accused his opponents of supplying nothing but drawings and pictures. Well, that's what we saw here, right? Nothing but drawings and pictures. So, uh, and, and, he, and he's also said, all you have is stories and pictures. So I'm ex expecting something more than stories here. For that reason, citing scriptures is insufficient because they do not meet Bill's standard of being something more than stories. Uh, he has said, he has challenged his debate opponents. He said, why do school books only show drawings and not photographs as proof of evolution? Now this dumbfounds me because of course, you know, uh, textbooks do, uh, school textbooks do show photographs, but I, I would ask him if he can show something, uh, some photographs as proof of God, a photograph of God. He seems to want photographs of these, uh, your, that's a dog, Bill, D-O-G. He seems to want photographs of creatures that died out a long, long time ago. So in that case, maybe he can give us some photographs of Jesus or admit that that is not really a criteria that he should be imposing on other people if he can't satisfy it himself. Uh, just a second, I need a drink here. So... Another criteria that uh, Bill seems to be big on when he's challenging other people is the criteria of empiricism. He says over and over, dig into the details. Don't just say, oh, it just so happened. See if it's empirical. Yet that is what we have seen in his, in his uh, opening right now. All he said is, I believe God did it that way. I believe God that, did it that way. I don't believe the evolutionary or the evolution or, or the biologists haven't explained this yet, so I believe this. To me, that's just saying it just so happened. It's just the way that God did it. 
So I'm going to discount all of such claims because they do not meet Bill Morgan's criteria of empiricism. empiricism. Neither can Bill simply make bald assertion, assertions, unfounded assertions such as no piping system comes together by chance, information does not come about by chance, feedback control systems are always the product of design. He has to demonstrate those things. And it's not just enough to say, oh, look, here's something that humans have designed. Therefore, design, you know, this only comes about by design. Here's information that humans produce. Therefore, information only comes from intelligence. Not good enough. That is just saying, oh, it just so happened. So Bill's claims will need to be both testifiable and verifiable to satisfy his own criteria. Matter of fact, in his debate with Sommerfeld about uh, a year ago, wow. he said, hello? That was a long time ago, but sure. Sorry. Uh, okay, it was posted on your channel last year, I could, but you did look a lot younger. Okay, but anyway, uh, I mean, you can say, I'm, I'm going to quote you. You said, do not put forward anything that you cannot prove by experimentation. Now, you can take that back now and say, hey, I was wrong about that, okay? But uh, you, you can do that in your response. Um, and, and furthermore, uh, another quote you had, and I think this is a more recent one, recent debate, you said, it is not science unless it is observed. So if Bill is going to claim that God created the universe and that God created species ex nihilo, can he print, present some observations of this happening? Because otherwise, according to Bill, it's not science. So there's the standards I'd like to see Bill meet. Scientific standards being empirical and testable and repeatable, or Bill standards, which I've done made a couple, couple quotes there. Now, uh, let's see, what time is it? Uh, ten, 10 minutes? Cool. I think we're doing good. So um, let's talk about creationism, which Bill is a creationist. Um, I'm not going to talk about cosmology because I don't have time, but his big shtick seems to be creationism. Let's talk about what kind of predictions creationism makes, and we'll see if Bill can actually uh, show that these predictions are true. Okay, one thing that creationism predicts is spontaneous generation. Now, okay, I'm sure that Bill and everybody in the audience is saying, oh, creationism doesn't expect it predict this, but actually, according to creation and creationism, animals were created whole. Okay, and without any previous ancestors. Furthermore, spontaneous generation was a creationist claim. It was a claim that was made by creationists and held by creationists and fully compatible with what creationism says. So another prediction that I would like to see uh, uh, that, that creationism, creationism makes is spontaneous appearance of species. According to Bill, according to the Bible, uh, God created all of these species at once on one day, okay, uh, from nothing from nothing previous. Two day, two days, two days, okay, uh, within a week, give or take. Um, so I would like to see if Bill can give any examples of uh, new species arising independent of previous species. And again, before he says, "Oh no, you know, uh, creationism doesn't predict this." Let's make one thing clear here, okay? This is what creationism says what happened, says that happened, okay? It is certainly not in conflict with creationism. And is there anyone in the chat that would that doubts that if this did occur, if we did see species spontaneously appearing out of nothing, that this would not be number one on Bill's list of evidence, that Bill would not say, look, creationism predicts that we see species appearing out of nothing, and voila, we see spe species appearing out of nothing. So therefore, this is a prediction made by creationism. And I think Bill needs to demonstrate that this is possible. If he cannot demonstrate that this is possible, then he has no observable evidence that it occurred. And having observable evidence is one of Bill Morgan's criteria uh, for belief. Another prediction. Okay, a prediction from, from creationism would be that a being with an IQ of infinity, as Bill has said, would create creatures that did not need microevolution. I know Bill has said he believes in microevolution, but not macroevolution. Well, a, a perfect designer could create a system, a system that did not need to be tweaked that way. We would not have uh, arms races between uh, cheetahs and, and gazelles. <coughs> Technically, 
cheetahs and gazelles reach an equilibrium point uh, in predator and prey, but they could reach that equilibrium point at any point. You know, cheetahs could be half as fast and gazelles could be half as fast. So I'm wondering if Bill can show me one, just one, perfectly designed organism by a being with infinite intelligence that does not undergo any level of evolution at all, that doesn't need to. And I want to see a living creature, because as Bill has said on the Schilling Show, is do it there, living evidence is more important than hand wave and saying it just so happened. So again, I'm really going to hold Bill to that. Hey, I want to see evidence, not it just so happened, not this is just what I believe. He said it is not science until it is observed. He claims that God can create an entirely new species ex nihilo. I want him to demonstrate that this has been observed. Okay, because otherwise it doesn't satisfy his own criteria. Bill, I hear your stories. Where's the evidence? Now, to rebut a couple of the things he said, just a moment, let me take a drink here. What we're going to find out today, I'm sorry, Bill. We're going to find out today that you are sadly ignorant of science. Bill likes to state that the law of biogenesis refutes, e refutes evolution. Guess what, Bill? There is no law of biogenesis. That is not a thing, okay? You will not find that in courses in, in chemistry or biology. About the only place you're going to find that is uh, creationist websites and references to uh, uh, Pasteur. Because people will say, oh, Pasteur came up with this hypothesis of, of biogenesis. Although I couldn't find any evidence or any references to him actually referring to a law of biogenesis or a hypothesis of biogenesis. But that's, uh, that's, that's considered the source of that claim. And people did bandy about the, ter the term and used it for a while around 200 years ago. And then it was abandoned simply because it could not be demonstrated to be true. In fact, <coughs> Pasteur's, uh, Pasteur's uh, uh, hypothesis of biogenesis genesis was actually only referring to organisms spontaneously appearing full, full, full form. And that is actually a creationist prediction. So what Pasteur actually did was show that the creationist prediction, the creationist claim that, be, that, that animals could uh, and organisms could spontaneously uh, appear fully formed, was not true. Bill likes to refer to the first law of thermodynamics. Again, he says, he quotes it as, as, as saying uh, that the first law says that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. I hear him say this over and over and over again. You will sometimes find this online by people who kind of misstate it, but the first law of thermodynamics is actually an extension of the law of the conservation of energy, which says that the total energy in a system remains constant, okay? Not that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but the total energy in the system remains constant. The first law of thermodynamics, Bill, does not say that matter cannot be created or destroyed. What it says is the total matter and energy in a system remains constant. Matter and energy can be created and destroyed in that system, as well as an equal amount of antimatter and negative energy is created and destroyed. And this is what quantum physicists are finding. They have found that at the quantum level, particles can appear out of nothing with matter and energy, okay, with an, another antiparticle going in the opposite direction. Everything balances out. They last a fraction of a second, collapse back in together, okay, and you're back to zero again. Well, you're, you're at zero the entire time, actually. The total amount of energy in the system was zero the entire time. Now, interestingly, about 10 or 15 years ago, physicists were studying what the fate of the universe would be. Was the universe going to collapse? Would it cycle through? Would it keep expanding indefinitely? Or would it come to some sort of steady state? And as part of this, they actually measured the total amount of matter and energy in the universe. And don't ask me how they did it, okay? I actually read it once and I kind of understood as it was going along, but you can look it up. And what they found out was that the total amount of energy and matter in the universe comes out to about zero. Nothing. So, in fact, the entire universe, the existence of the entire universe, does not violate the law of thermodynamics. It actually conforms with the laws of thermodynamics, as we would expect it to if it arose from natural means. This is not something we would expect 
if it was created by a god. I don't think a god would have to do accounting, okay, and make sure everything balances out. Certainly, our existence doesn't depend on antimatter. If there was antimatter in our existence, in our existence as human beings, we would blow up. Uh, so it, it actually is not what we would expect a god constrained by the laws of therm thermodynamics to create. So, uh, information, Bill says information does not come about by chance. That is really disappointing, okay? Information is signal over noise. Signal over noise. If you have noise in the background, either no signal at all or random noise, okay, and you find some signal in it, some differentiation in it, that is a signal, that is information. Uh, so information, one thing Bill- Just right over about, a minute, just, just over a minute. Okay, one thing Bill was right about, information doesn't really come from random things because random things are noise. But it doesn't come only from intelligent things either because we can take a look at starlight, okay? And we can break it down into, into its components and we can uh, find the, the blank bands in the starlight and we can tell what that starlight was made from, what, 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 what that star is composed of. That is information, not created by an intelligent source, that's just shining out from a star. So it's claimed that information is, can only come about by chance is also dismissed. I think that was all. Oh, um, well, last thing, last thing. Bill says, I'd be happy to provide 100 million dogs and you bring them to life. I'm quoting him in a previous one. Uh, and bring them to life with chemistry, biology, and physics. First of all, Bill, I want to know who your supplier is, okay? Because that sounds a little suspicious to come up with 100 million dead dogs. Maybe I don't want to know who your supplier is. Uh, but my question to you is, if I gave you a million dead, dead dogs, could you raise one of them from the dead by praying over it? And I'll pass it back to you. All right. Well, thank you so much for that opening statement and rebuttal. Um, Cygnus, that was 20 minutes. So we've now concluded uh, Bill's opening statement as well as Cygnus's uh, opening statement combined with a rebuttal. We are now moving into Bill's rebuttal of 10 minutes. Um, once again, I'll give you a one minute warning. Since it's the, the, the rebuttal round, we got to be a little bit more strict. And to the audience, Got a lively chat. Glad everybody's having fun. Lots of good questions, super chats coming in. Just make sure you are tagging me and, and we'll do our best to get to your questions. So enough for me. Let's hand it over to Bill. Bill, whenever you're ready, you've got 10 minutes for rebuttal. Bill, you are on mute. <laughs> But you're good to go. You're good to go. I see uh, that you want to screen share here. So here we are. I'll restart your timer there. And go ahead. Okay. I would like to thank Sickness for the debate. And I'd like to tell everybody, no matter what your belief is, you will always learn more by talking to people you disagree with than agree with. And I, I'm enjoying this debate. Uh, I'm trying to get everything you said. Uh, he... Uh, I don't know, complained about peppering questions. Well, I apologize. We only have a limited amount of time and a lot to talk about. And I do prepare with lots of questions. And so no need to feel offended by me peppering you with questions. Uh, you said there was no positive evidence. Uh, I once worked with a guy and uh, he said to me, Bill, why don't you tell me any more about Jesus? And I said, I've told you everything I know. I don't know if I can help you, Cygnus. Thermodynamics, biogenesis, self, DNA, urethras, that's positive evidence. Now, remember my stone example. I cannot say I'm 100% absolutely positively sure my dog over there, her urethra is the result of design, but I'm telling you it's a much better explanation. The same with the eye. I cannot tell you 100% it's a design, but... I am 99.999% sure simply because I wasn't there. Sig, uh, we do have a cross-examination, but the crop circles, everybody concluded that was a design. That was positive evidence that there was a designer. I'm arguing the dog is more complex than that. Observation. I'm glad you brought that up. This debate is evidence for God, not creation versus evolution. And you brought up observation. I'm, well, if you want to bring up evolution, that's fine. 
Where are the transitional forms? Where are the ancestors between a reptile and a bird? Reptile between a man and an ape-like ancestor. That's what I'm talking about, observation. So we'll get into my deep uh, creation argument, but I think it's a good one. Apes make apes. People make people. Ladybugs make ladybugs. Kangaroos make kangaroos. That's not religious. That's genetics. That's biochemistry. And that's what we observe trillions of times every day if we're looking. Bacteria only produces more bacteria. That's what we observe. Where are your in-between sickness? I don't see them. Okay. He said it's not his job to defend evolution. He's not a cosmology guy. Well, you did volunteer for the debate, so I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what your job is then. The glaringly absent definition of God, I apologize, a designer, a creator. That is my foundation for belief in God, that he is a designer and creator, that he designed the dog's urethra, prostate, etc. cetera. Uh, standards of evidence, science and empiricism. I'm stating laws of science, thermodynamics, biogenesis. I fully realize people don't like calling it the law of biogenesis anymore. But there is still the cell theory. The cell theory teaches a living cell can only come from a living cell. And the law of biogenesis was not falsified. If it is, please tell me where it was. You'll win a Nobel Prize and become famous of life coming from non-life. So just because it's taken out of the textbooks doesn't mean it's been violated. But we do have a cross-examination coming up on that. Photographs. I want photographs of transitional forms. In ninth grade, I saw beautiful drawings of an ape man turning into a man, and I believed it. I really thought it was true. I believed my teacher. That's what I want photographs of, the transitional forms. We got 8 billion humans roaming around the planet. We got a million or so apes, no in-betweens. We got billions of birds, or millions of birds, millions of lizards. The only blizzards we see are in Toronto for standing for truth. There are no bird lizards. Okay. So you can't discount all my arguments by saying there's no evidence that's, that's too convenient for you. Somehow humans got here, you would agree. I'm saying they got here only from other humans. There's something called mitochondrial DNA. I don't know if you've heard of that. You can trace the female lineage in your DNA, and everybody on the planet goes back to a female. And they call her Eve, mitochondrial Eve. It doesn't go back to an ape. So once again, the stones is my foundation. Let me see if this works. And I might need an extra second or two of standing. Uh, can you see that? You say creationists make no predictions. A uh, standing, can you see that? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Okay, can you see it? Yes, looks uh, good. It, okay. it's, it's a, a yes. couple gorillas. Okay, could I have a couple extra seconds because of that? Of Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Take your time. I appreciate that. Okay, creation predictions. Apes make apes. People make people. Giraffes make giraffes. That is what we observe with our eyes. More creation predictions. Life will not come from non-life. The canned food industry would be broke if life came from non-life. You keep out the living organisms, you're not going to get life. Creationists predict matter and energy will not appear from nothing. That is what we predict. That is what we observe. So creationists make plenty of predictions. Okay? We talked about where everything started from. This is a great question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? If you've seen my past debates, you've seen this. The answer is two chickens, one male, one female. They needed a respiratory system, a digestive system, muscular system. Uh, you, you understand the details. You're a smart guy. They had to be adults. The, the first organisms have to take care of themselves before they can start a family. The bears were adults. The humans were adults. What do they need to live? the right food, the right water, the right oxygen, the right gravity, the right barometric pressure, many, many, many things. Can I absolutely 100% prove this? No, but it's by far the best 
explanation. You talked about speciation. I 100% believe speciation is true. If you build a freeway between a whole bunch of snails, after a while, the snails will no longer interbreed. You could call that a new species, but they're still snails. And genetically, they could reproduce, but morphologically and the way they behave, they may not uh, reproduce. So I have never said I don't believe in speciation, uh, but I do not believe a snail can make anything except a snail. And in that example, they're losing information, not gaining genetic information. Okay. Uh, you want a perfectly designed being that does, does not need microevolution? Well, we're getting into philosophy, which is your strength. I'm an engineer. I believe God created variety out of his wisdom. I believe in free will. I believe a lot of things can happen that we are not robots, that God created individuals and populations with the ability to adapt. So I was talking about adaptation. Do animals adapt? Absolutely. Many years ago, I was in Northern California where it was very, very close. I'm sorry, cold. And there was a horse. This silly horse had hair about three inches long. I called up a microbiologist I know, and he said all organisms have enzymes sitting around waiting to be triggered by the environment. This beautiful horse had enzymes to grow long hair in case the weather got cold. If we took this beautiful horse to the very hot desert, different enzymes would be energized and it would, and it would have short hair. So this is part of God's wisdom, part of God's design. Is adaptation proof of the theory of evolution? No, it's still a horse. And so I believe that is how God did it so that we can uh, adapt and survive. So uh, once again, the cell theory, first law of thermodynamics, uh, to me, that's a lot of philosophy. That stuff you put into your gas tank is energy. That stuff you put into your mouth is energy. Energy over time comes from available energy. That's energy that can do work to useless energy, to useless heat. That's basic thermodynamics, and uh, philosophy is your only attempt to try to get around that. This universe has massive amount of energy, and it's being converted to unavailable energy. Now, that's basic thermodynamics, and something that I think is worth pursuing. Okay, I got a little bit of time, so I'll just throw something in here. Seven more reasons to believe in God. Cygnus. Which one is the most beautiful? Are they all beautiful? Art always requires an artist. Not only is the art different in each wing, the design seconds, of the wing is different as well. So, okay, I'll, I'll be done with this. I don't want to overrun. But once again, more evidence for God, beauty and art and our ability to appreciate it. I'm sorry, I ran over nine seconds. All right, no problem at all. We are... Good to go. So that concludes, Bill, your 10-minute rebuttal. And we are now moving on to Cygnus for five minutes, a five-minute rebuttal. Cygnus, whenever you're ready. Yeah, okay. So, again, very disappointed. I I'm going to address a couple things just, you know, just because they're kind of fun. Uh, Bill likes to show this picture of um, – stones in a circle on a sidewalk or something and saying anybody would think that this is like anybody would be foolish to think that this was not done by design well i would like to invite bill and everybody uh to go to wikipedia and look up fairy circle or fairy ring okay a fairy circle or fairy ring is a large uh um there's a there's a there's a picture of a beautiful one there it is a large circle of mushrooms okay not filled in not a patch of mushrooms just a circle, just the line, all right? And the one they've got on Wikipedia has got to be 20 feet across, much larger than the one Bill did. And it's a pretty much a perfect circle. And they called them fairy circles because they had no natural explanation for them. And so, well, if there's no natural explanation, had to be something supernatural because, because we don't know what caused this, we're going to assume that it was fairies. 
Well, it turns out that's just the way this fungus grows. It starts in a spot in the middle and it grows outwards. It's all a single organism, I believe, okay? And it makes an almost perfect circle. It's really cool, look it up, Science Rocks. Um, again, Bill started just peppering me with questions rather than supplying evidence. And I thought it was interesting that he started by saying, we peppered me by, with questions because of a limited amount of time. Well, if there's a limited amount of time, how would I answer them all to begin with, okay? That's a little odd, all right? Um, but again, it's not my responsibility in this case to answer his questions until the question and answer and cross-examine period. And yet that is what he spent his second opening or second statement doing. Um, um, he, he says that I would not, that I'm not uh, defending evolution uh, and, and that I should have been prepared to defend that when I agreed to debate. Well, Bill, I already said that I will defend evolution. You can ask me these questions during the cross-examination period. And uh, I already offered to have another debate where I would take the positive side. Uh, and frankly, you agreed to this debate. And, the, point, and the, the topic of this debate that you agreed to was providing evidence for God, okay? Not uh, challenging me to defend evolution. So that was your agreement. So Bill spends his second, uh, his, his rebuttal, okay? Uh, just stating the laws of science. He says the laws of science support him. Well, I already showed there is no law of biogenesis. That's just something he and creationists are using. That's it, okay? So that does not support his his beliefs, okay? I already showed that the law of thermodynamics, okay, is not violated by the existence of the universe. As a matter of fact, we would not expect the law of thermodynamics to be obeyed by the universe in case, in, if God had created it. There's no reason for him to. There's no reason for God to create antimatter. Okay, uh, uh, all he needs to all he needed to create for us was matter. Uh, he says, "I want photographs of transitional forms." Well, Bill, you were challenged to provide photographs for your own beliefs and your own claims. Okay, and I don't blame you for like not having them ready. Okay, but it would have been nice since you knew this was evidence for God. But you could have at least said, "Hey, we do have photographs of this. We do have photographs of that." So all you've done there is reiterate once more that you failed to meet your own standards of evidence. You showed, for some reason, gorilla pictures. I don't know why, that's not evidence for God, unless you can show that God made them. And he can't, all he can say is that he believes God made them. That's it, and that is what Bill has accused other people of doing. That is what he calls hand-waving and just saying it happened, all right? Bill had a second chance there after I had explained to him what standards of scientific evidence are and what Bill's standards of evidence are and completely failed. Um, he says, oh, oh, uh, that uh, creationism makes the prediction that apes make apes and that uh, dogs make dogs. Bill, that is not a prediction. That is an observation, okay? Not a prediction. So this is something that was already known. As a matter of fact, it's been known for a long time that when a dog gives birth, it's a dog. OK, but it is not a prediction. As a matter of fact, it is predicted by evolution. All right. So uh, and, and it's actually not predicted by creationism, because if you believe a God exists, could give birth to anything. Right. So uh, let me see anything else. Uh, so, again, I haven't seen any predictions. I state I mentioned a couple of predictions that creationism makes. He failed to even like uh, address those completely failed. He predicts, he says, creationism predicts that matter and energy will not come from nothing, but actually it does. Quantum physics shows us that at the quantum level, it can. So Bill's science is woefully inadequate, and his understanding of how science works is woefully inadequate. And my time is up. Awesome, awesome. Yes, with 10 seconds to spare, so I appreciate you guys being just on time and keeping this fun. So this has been engaging. And that concludes the opening statements and the rebuttals, which means we are now moving into everybody's favorite part of the debate, the cross-examination round. So we've got two rounds, five minutes each, starting with, I believe Bill will be starting with five minutes of questions to Cygnus. So uh, the floor is yours, gentlemen. Let me uh, get the timer going. And... Whenever you guys are ready, go ahead. Okay. You said the law of biogenesis is no longer a law. That's fine. Those are words. 
could you explain to me how you think life originated? Not if you know, how do you think life originated? Okay, well, first of all, those are not merely words, okay? That is the that is the consensus among biology, okay? Please answer so, my question. I, I, I'm the I, am addressing, I am addressing your question. You made a statement at the beginning, okay? So I'm addressing that again. You dismissed something. Now, your question was how the universe began. Was that it? Life. How did life originate? What is your best explanation? Oh, probably I, I'm probably the RNA universe that uh, we had uh, uh, chemicals um, that uh, combined and started replicating. Now, here's an interesting thing. Can we define life? Oh, it's please very answer difficult questions. You can interrogate me later. So okay. why do you believe that? What? Why do you believe the RNA model? Oh, because that model actually makes predictions, okay, and explanations. It explains things that we see, and it makes predictions about things. And it's useful. So is that RNA is why I believe it. Is what? RNA life? RNA? Well, again, we have to talk about what life is. I don't think RNA is life. What about viruses? Are they life? I don't know. No, RNA is not life. No, but it, you it's believe a reproducing it because... chemical. It's a chemical that will re reproduce. That will replicate. In laboratories, if it synthesizes with existing proteins, it can. In a control... in my uh, opening, I said intelligent people doing experiments in labs. Uh, RNA does not model the natural world. It's synthesized in laboratories with intelligent people, and they're not even close to originating life. So you believe in the that RNA is the synthesis or the origin of life explanation. Why? Because of science or because of your philosophy? Because of science. And what science is that? They're doing it in oh. a laboratory, Cygnus. What? Oh, the science that says that, well, for, for one thing, we find RNA in all living uh, organisms. Okay. Right. And, right. Um, you know, biology, it makes consistent predictions about things. Now, I could say God created it, but that doesn't help me make any predictions. That serves no useful purpose. But RNA is not living. A dead dog is not living, et cetera. Right. Uh, we can table that, but I think you demonstrated it. you don't have an answer to the origin of life. So well, actually, I does, did provide an answer, Bill. Okay. Well, it wasn't a very good one. Does matter well, exist? Thinking. Is there such a thing as matter? Uh, yes. Does energy exist? Yes. Okay, now my system is the entire universe. I'm, I'm using all matter and energy. What is your best explanation for its origin? I, I, don't, I don't have an explanation for its origin. Do I need one? Yeah, we're in a debate, aren't we? What's your well, best well, explanation? I didn't see if you well, knew. First of all, we're in a debate about evidence for God, okay? Right. So, but but you're, it's fair, you can ask me. But my ability to explain the origin of the universe has nothing to do with, with not either support or refute the uh, hypothesis that God exists, would it? Absolutely. Please answer my question for your best explanation. Did it poof from nothing by natural means? Uh, my best explanation would be um, a, some sort of quantum event, because that's the only thing we know of where matter and energy can be created out of nothing. Well, it, just, it was not created. For, but you believe matter and energy was created from nothing by natural means? Well, I would say it occurred. I don't know. To, to say it was created implies that uh, you know it was an, an intentional act. And we don't know that. And I'm not going to state things that we don't know. Okay, well, you're bringing philosophy to a, a science debate, but that's okay. There's this thing called philosophy of science that right. scientists know and use. And it won't feed the bulldog, will it? What criteria would you use to determine if crop circles were the result of designer chance? Crop circles? Uh, I would do experiments. Okay. Do you think the crop circles are the result of design or chance? Turns out they're the, uh, well, neither. Neither. You seem to think that that's a, the dichotomy, okay? That it's either design or chance, and that's not the case. We can have mechanisms that create things as well. Okay. Well, planned or unplanned? Nobody unplanned. argued that supernatural or natural forces made the crop circles. Everyone agreed it was a design. Shh. But I respect that you are defending your worldview, but I don't see any science justifying your worldview. Well, I, I did supply science justifying it. No, you waved your hands. You said RNA. You said a quantum. No, RNA is science, Bill. Evidence. RNA is science, Bill. Yeah, but you just waved your hands and said RNA, and you know RNA is not an answer to the origin of life. But Ooh, my time. Uh, how do I know that? Time. That's five minutes. That's five minutes. 
Okay, okay so uh, we're now moving on to Cygnus. You've got five minutes to cross-examine Bill. Go ahead whenever you're ready. The floor is yours. All right, just a second here. Let me restart my timer. Find my questions. Oh, come on. I took too damn many notes. Okay, Bill, what is your best explanation for the origin of life, and is your explanation based upon science? Yes. My best explanation for the origin of life is it had to be supernatural. I cannot 100% prove that, but everything we've observed, and I bear with me on the law of biogenesis and the cell theory, everything we know about science falsifies the notion that life began by natural means. This doesn't absolutely prove it, but it falsifies it and makes a supernatural explanation the best explanation. Bill, how can you invoke a supernatural explanation, okay, when you don't can't even demonstrate that the supernatural exists? I can invoke a supernatural when the natural explanation is falsified by observable science. Well, wait, wait, you say the natural explanation. Can there only be a natural explanation? Could there be a natural explanation we don't know about? Absolutely. Where is okay. it? So, I'm all so, at that point, so at that point, why are you jumping to the supernatural? Because where is that? But once again, like my stones on the driveway, 99.99999% sure life only comes from life. That is the cell theory, the law of biogenesis. That is, everything no, that is just more hand-waving, okay? That's not an explanation. That's just a statement of what you believe. It is not an explanation for how life originated. Now, if you, now you seem to say that, that God created life ex nihilo, okay? But you cannot show that. That and is I not that. observable. You 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 have not even tried to show that this has been observed. I just I think you were listening. I said I science falsifies the natural explanation, and okay. your RNA attempt was like a beached whale. It didn't really go anywhere. Sydney. So so, so Bill, so you, do, you don't know much about natural. Bill. Bill, this is my time. You don't yes. know much about science if you think science falsified something. Okay. Okay, falsify something. You you can't not you cannot name something that falsifies uh, evolution. Okay, you can't say, oh, um, you you can say I don't think this explanation is good enough. You can say, oh, uh, you know, um, I don't think that this is possible. Okay, that's fine, but that's hand waving. To falsify, you have to show something that contradicts evolution, and you haven't done that. Okay, the you can. The, the law of abiogenesis is not a law. Cell theory does not state that cells cannot evolve, okay? It just says that cells fully formed are created from other cells. It's much like the uh, Pasteur's uh, 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 debunking of, um, of spontaneous generation. He was only talking about uh, fully formed creatures coming into existence. And that is all that cell theory addresses. And any biologist will tell you that. Okay, you can rewind the tape. I said everything that we have observed has falsified life coming from non-life. I name never one thing have, that, name wait, one wait, thing wait, we've wait, observed that falsifies life coming from non-life. Peas and carrots, peas and carrots. Everything we've observed name falsifies one. it. I did not say it's absolutely falsified, okay, but so I'm right falsified. to where it is. So I'm asking you to name one thing that falsifies it that says, oh, this shows that life cannot come from non-life. All the observations of living things, it comes from something living. My dog, you said yes. you want pictures. I showed you a living dog. You're so evidence Bill, of the falsification. because you're, you're making a really crazy. basic fallacy. You're well, saying, let me answer, well, yeah. but that's no, what this is my time. You're making a really basic fallacy. You're saying because we see living things come from living things, living things can only come from living things. That is a fallacy. You're saying if A, then B. If not A, then not B. That's a fallacy. I'm saying it's the best explanation. It wasn't an explanation, okay? Well, it was sure. a claim. Can you Everything show me any experimental evidence for that? Any Everything experimental evidence that support. shows it can't. Everything we observe supports life only comes from life. Uh, standing for truth, how much time do I have left? 35 seconds. Uh, Bill, uh, in 35 seconds, can you give me a test or evidence that would falsify the hypothesis that God exists? If you could make matter and energy from nothing, if you could make life from non-life, if you could demonstrate bacteria being the ancestor to Beethoven, 
that would be pretty good evidence, and I'll join you on the atheist club. Well, well, I will how be is that evidence that God does not exist? Because God can do those things too, right? Pardon me? God can do those things too. So how would that be evidence that God does not exist? Well, I would join you in the atheist club if you could demonstrate that. Really? If yeah. I was a theist, that would not convince me. <laughs> that's that's a dangerous God of the gaps. Okay. Nothing's going to convince you. you we both You're know hanging that. your hat on a lot, on a pretty thin coat rack. All right, we're done here. Yeah, just in time. Okay, so zero seconds to spare. Uh, these are going by quick. These are fun. You guys are uh, making this a debate to remember. We've got between 75 and 80 people in the chat having a good time, guys. So good job. Uh, we're moving into, we're, we're, we're bringing it back to Bill. Bill, you now have five minutes. Well, before to the five minutes goes, uh, if you don't mind, I would love to emphasize we can still be pals and think the other person is wrong. My best friend as an engineer was an atheist. We we loved exchange, so it doesn't have to, and I'm not saying it is, it doesn't have to get personal, but I, I enjoy the give and take. Okay, awesome. Well, um, thanks for that, Bill. We're going to go into, let me get my clock going. No, you guys are keeping this fun, cordial, uh, and engaging. So here we go. We got five minutes. Bill, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, what... Do you believe evolved first? The urinary system, the muscular system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the immune system, or the skeletal system? Uh, the skeletal Let's see. Name them again. Well, You've heard of the skeletal system because we found fossils without uh, that are not notochords. Okay. Probably so you muscular. Have a muscular, I would say. Muscular system. If we go back to like protists and such, they have to be able to move. Okay. Or maybe the digestive system, because first thing you have to be, okay, let's say the digestive system, because even the most basic cells have to be able to envelop another piece of material and absorb its goods. Uh, so I will say the um, digestive system. Okay, but it needs a muscular system to move the food. Well, not necessarily. I mean, uh, currents can waft food into things. Mm -hmm. okay. And actually a cell, when it, uh, you know, like a white blood cell, I don't believe a white blood cell has uh, muscles. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, that's my best answer. Okay. And I, I think you got my point on that one. Uh, can no, nature, anyway. How does nature with an IQ of zero make a urethra? I'll make a urethra? Very right. inefficiently. Very inefficiently. And very cruelly. Okay? And that nature works by trial and chance. It creates a whole bunch of pos different different varieties. And only the good ones survive, and the other ones kind of die miserable deaths. So um, I, I kind of have a problem with, you probably do, with creationists or, or with, with Christians who believe in that God guides biology, you know, that God guided evolution. To me, God's got to be pretty cruel if that's the method he chose. Up, he, he chose. Do you have evidence of dogs with poorly designed urethras that are slowly evolving? With poorly designed urethras? Or is it just philosophy that there were poorly designed urethras? Well, it, I would be surprised if the dogs are not, if there aren't dogs born that have malformed urethras and other organs occasionally, since that happens to people, and they would not e evolve. Besides, you, you don't seem to understand that individual organisms don't evolve, species evolve. I understand that. I so understand. when you say, is, is a dog evolving, that doesn't mean anything at all. Well, it had to have an ancestor, and it had to have an ancestor to the urethra. Well, it had, it had a lot of ancestors. That It was a species, not an individual. The first life would have to do what in order to survive? In order to survive, I have to be you know, metabolize uh, energy. Right. But in order to survive as a species, okay, continue. It also to be able to reproduce, replicate. Yep, I lost you. In order to survive as a species, the first type of life would have to be able to replicate. I, I stopped the time. Yeah, I stopped the timer there. We can hear you, but you're a little distant now. I'm not sure if. Okay, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Sorry if I'm a little, a little distant. Maybe I need counseling. <laughs> uh -huh. Are Are you using a, 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 a he headphones or anything like that? Sydney? No, I'm, I'm just talking on my phone, but I may have been leaning back my chair a bit. So. Okay. It looks like it's, it looks like it's improved now. So uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'll start the timer again. Okay, so I got another five minutes. Well, it's no, my time. 
Yeah, we, oh, we still got. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought that was kind of quick. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so to rephrase my question, and it's just, you believe the first life, matter and energy mixed together, made a living organism, which violates the law of biogenesis, the cell theory, and everything we've observed. But not only did it become living, it could metabolize, reproduce, respond to stimuli, move, and adapt to a change in environment. Does that position take faith? No. And again, there is no law of bio biogenesis. No, it doesn't take faith. It takes confidence. I have to have confidence in the fact that everything we have discovered about the origin of life and the formation of the earth, et cetera, everything has had, so far, has had a natural explanation. So it takes a certain amount of confidence that way. But it doesn't take faith. Faith is belief uh, regardless of evidence. And nothing, I believe, is based on faith. Your RNA hypothesis does not get you to life. You might be able to reproduce RNA in a lab. Why do you think that's going to result in life? You just said evidence and science. Uh, um, I, I reject your claim that, R, that the RNA hypothesis cannot get you to life. Well, how does it? Don't you need proteins, DNA, RNA, cell membrane? Well, you just asked me how it started. And actually, we don't know that all life needs those things. Well, then you admitted your answer was not scientific. It was pure philosophy. No, it's scientific. I said it was based on confidence. It's not pure philosophy. We have we have scientific evidence supporting abiogenesis. We do not have a full a full theory of it yet, but there's a lot of evidence supporting it. Okay. Well, you're talking about reproducing RNA in a lab, and you're trying to get to DNA with genetic code. I didn't say anything about reproducing RNA in a lab. You asked me about how life began of four billion years ago. I don't think there were labs back then. Okay, well, you talked Time. about the RNA world. That's, that's that's five minutes, to be fair. That's five that's minutes. That's five minutes, guys. So now we're moving to Cygnus. You got another five minutes to ask Bill any question pertaining to the topic. So go ahead. I'll start the timer on your first word. Mm -hmm. So, um, Bill, you like to say that uh, apes only give birth to apes and uh, humans only give to you birth to humans. Well, why don't frogs give birth to frogs? Why don't frogs give birth to frogs? Yeah, why don't they give, why do they give birth to tadpoles instead of frogs? Uh, the brilliant designer gave tadpoles as the first life, and they have the genetic information to turn into a beautiful frog. But that doesn't say that doesn't say why. Okay, that that's a hand waving. Why? Why? I mean, I look at other species, and a human baby is a tiny human. And a, a baby cat is a baby is, is a small cat. Why aren't baby frogs small frogs? Well, how did you start life out as? I know it's your time. You started out as one fertilized egg. Mm -hmm. Were you human? Uh, I was a human. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. There you go. You answered my question. It's a frog. We call it a tadpole. It's a frog in that state. But when I but when I gave birth, you said that they only give birth to humans. Okay. When I give birth, it's a it's a polywog. It's a tadpole. I said now, the I, reason I didn't the say I, that I said apes make apes, people make people. A tadpole well, is a frog. It seems kind of odd that a perfect designer would not just have the frog make tiny frogs. Why don't they come out? They're very vulnerable as, poly, right. as, as tadpoles, okay? What's more, I was because of you, you've been talking about the circulatory system. As you've been talking about the circulatory system, can you hear me? It sounds like the, that movie, uh, Radio Kill the Movie movie Star. Remember that? Radio Kill the... SFT, can you hear me? Video Kill yes, the Radio yes. Star? It, it, it sounds it, terrible. It, it sounds like you are um, you may have sat back again or... Okay, okay, so I'm closing in. Okay, so I was looking at circulatory systems, okay? And um, the, the, the frog and, and the circulatory system actually has to start out supplying gills to the, uh, to the tadpole. So as it develops in the embryo, it has the, the heart and the entire circulatory system has to be set up to supply blood flow and oxygen uh, from the gills. And then it becomes a frog and that gradually switches over to lungs, which besides being beautiful evidence for the uh, claim that we evolved from aquatic creatures, um, it just seems odd that a god would not just create tiny frogs. Why wouldn't he just have frogs? Why didn't God just instantly give us babies instead of the wife or the woman going through nine months? Good question. I don't know. 
Good question. Okay. But, okay. So you don't know that. Okay. Let me ask you this. From the minute you were fertilized to when you were born, when you were in your mother, your digestive, your respiratory, your circulatory system okay. was different. Hang on, Bill, this is my time. This is my time. This is my time. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, SFT, I forgot to set my clock. But how much time do I have left? You've got just over uh, just over two minutes, Cygnus. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, so you are you're a Christian, and you're pretty much take the Bible literally, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm sure you believe that some things were intended as metaphors, okay? But you believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible. Off topic. Not ashamed of it, but off topic. Oh, it's coming back on the topic. Trust me, okay. it is. Okay. So um, I believe the Bible that, is true. You, you, so the Bible is true. Okay, cool. Okay. And you also say that things, it is not science unless it is observed, and that humans only give birth to humans. Have you ever observed a virgin giving birth to a god? Uh, Just yes or no. Just yes or no. Have you? A virgin giving birth to a what? To a god. Have you no. ever, ever observed that? I've seen three births my whole life. Okay. And so they, weren't, they weren't godly. Maybe maybe watching YouTube videos. Have you ever seen a YouTube video of a virgin giving birth to a god? I have not. Any accounts of this that you have been scientifically verified? No. Okay. Nope. It's called what, about this? what about this? Have you ever seen women giving birth to giants after having sexual intercourse with angels? I have not. You have not. So let me ask you, the virgin birth and uh, the references to the Nephilim in the Bible, do you reject those because you have not observed them? That Oh, could, could I give an answer and not take into his time if you add time? Because that's a great question. You see, I don't want to chew up his time uh, standing. If you guys wanted an extra we'll few minutes. More. No, uh, give a brief answer now. Give a I'm brief answer, an answer now. You like. What? I'm going to give an answer you're going to surprisingly like, Sickness. Okay. Do it. I want to give you more time. Okay. Getting to the flood of Noah, I 99% believe there was a global flood, 1% faith. So I 100% believe okay. there was a global flood, but I have some faith, but I think geology supports it. Okay. I didn't ask about Noah. You're going to like this, Cygnus. 100% on faith, do I believe that they built that huge ark? And that it floated around. Well, I didn't ask about Noah. Wait, I'm telling you about belief. There's things you can believe with a lot of knowledge. Like I believe my car will start. And there's things you can believe on blind faith. I do believe the teachings of the Bible. And I'll tell you some things I go, man, that blows me away. But I choose no, wait. to believe it. Your so answer to those questions. Wait, wait, Bill. I think we can cut this chase here. Your answer is yes, you do believe the virgin birth and yes you do believe yes. that in nephilim and it blows me away just like okay. it blows me away but does that not violate your standard okay to that uh, humans only give birth to humans and that it is not science unless it is observed but jesus was a human he was also many a god people, and he was also a virgin the nephilim, the, nephilim, humans. the nephilim supposedly had sex with angels Right, sons of God, uh, daughters of man. Okay, okay. So, have you ever observed that? Have you ever no, observed either I, of those things? I wasn't born yet. I didn't say. No, it. no, I, I didn't say back then. I, I know your ever. point. I mean, ever. So, can we agree that your own beliefs don't meet your own standards? No, we're talking about science, the world that you and I live in. We're talking about life, matter, and energy. We're not talking about. Bible teaching. You are the one who you are the one who continually says that your faith is based on believed on empiricism. And you are the one who says you should not believe things unless you can observe them. So I all I want to hear is is you have said that you believe in a virgin birth. Yes, and I you do. Believe, and you believe in the Nephilim, but you have not observed any of these things happening. So can we agree that your beliefs do not meet your own standards? 15 seconds, Bill. Have a I short. I told you I answer. believe on it 100% faith. Okay. Okay. So okay. your your belief is emotional, not science driven. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to paint myself in a little corner, but you have you just did. That life came from non life and matter came from nothing. So who's got the greatest? We're, we're talking about your belief in the virgin birth and the belief in the Nephilim, for which there's no scientific evidence and no, nothing has been observed. 
So your beliefs do not meet your own standards of scientific evidence that you insist everybody needs to follow. Insist is a very strong I'm, word, my friend. I'm done right there, SFT. Pass it back to him. Okay, yeah. guys. So It's a miracle. Um, hey, listen, guys. You guys kept this fun. That was a great uh, couple rounds of cross-examination. I will say this. We got a ton of great super chats and questions that came in. Therefore, what we can do is move into the closing statements, five minutes each, and then we can go through mm, maybe 20 minutes of questions. I'll pick and choose some of the, the, the better ones or the, at least the ones that came in an hour and a half ago when we first started. And then you guys can have a little bit of back and forth if you'd like on, on uh, specific questions. So you guys want to move into the closing statements and then go into some questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, could we do a brief cross exam like we talked about earlier? If you, it, yeah, it, it's totally I, I up to you. Did that. That. Just brief, maybe three minutes. I'll tell you, what, you answer. You asked me questions for three minutes, but it would be nice if they were questions that actually supported evidence for God or challenged my challenges to you. If this is just going to be like, hey, can you explain this? Can you explain that? Yeah, whatever. Take your three minutes, but it's not going to accomplish anything, Bill. If, if oh, you guys want, want, if you guys want, what we can do then, uh, <laughs> what we can do, because I've, I've got the format uh, beside me, so I just wanted to stick to that, uh, you know, to be fair and, and honorable to uh, the, the format you guys chose. What we can do is, is we can do maybe 10 minutes of just a free flowing organic dialogue, asking any other question um, that either debater feels that they want to kind of get out before we get into a, a closing. So what, what, why don't we do that then? We'll, we'll do a few minutes of just free flowing dialogue. Bill, if you had a question, Cygnus, you had a question, then we'll jump into the, into the closing. So uh, go ahead. The, the floor is yours, if that's what you'd like. Okay, and I promise not to dominate. Uh, Cygnus, why are you an atheist? Oh, uh, I had an epiphany. You've heard of like Christians who said, "Oh, I was just struck by something, and I suddenly, uh, you know, realized that uh, God exists." Well, uh, when I was around 21 years old, took a bicycle trip to a uh, state park, and got up early in the morning, went out on a trail, and I turned around a corner. And I was the only one there, okay, on this trail, and was looking out over a little glen, and it was completely silent, no noise at all, okay? And uh, it was just so beautiful, so beautiful. And I sat down there, and I looked at it, and I said to myself, you know what? If there is any divine presence in this world, if there is any supernatural you know, force in this world, okay, or, or if there's any meaning in this world, it is not to be found in any building built by man or any book written by men. And at that point, I decided to wipe my slate clean. And the, the interesting thing is I can actually go back to that exact spot and I have been a couple of times. This is a spot where I lost my faith, okay? I decided to wipe my, wipe my slate clean, okay? And I would only believe things for which I had evidence. And uh, I, I looked at some of the other faiths, but having been raised a Christian, I already didn't have a lot of respect for them. OK, but I looked at the Christian faith and the claims of Christian the Christianity makes. And I realized they just didn't make sense. Since then, I have become a. Um, so I guess that would have made me a, a non theist at that time. OK, uh, but since then, uh, I, by you know, looking at logic and science and reasoning and also reading the Bible. OK. I realized that uh, this is a rather immoral book. I would not be a part of any, I would not want to, I could not lower my moral standards far enough to worship a God that uh, commands genocide, slavery, infanticide, and rape. Can't do that. Uh, the claims of the Bible make absolutely no sense at all. And so I, for a long time, I was uh, an agnostic atheist, okay? I don't know that God doesn't exist, but I don't see any evidence for it. But I actually have a couple like logical proofs now that show that God cannot exist. But that's a time for another debate if you want to. So I, I am a, kind of a rare breed and then I'm a Gnostic atheist now. Well, Go everybody ahead. wants to be a Gnostic, that's for sure. A what? Everybody wants to be a Gnostic. But anyways, that means knowledge. Well, actually most, yeah, I know what it is means. I, I've used it. Most of the atheists will identify as agnostic atheists. They'll say, I don't believe in God, but I don't have any reason to uh, believe that he does not exist. I just reject the hypothesis that God exists. Could anything be so complex you would say that's got to be a design? Or is your mind made up? It's not a matter of complexity. 
The, uh, complexity, complexity is not a hallmark of design, okay? It's not. Simplicity is, okay? What's the simplest way to do something and still get it done? I mean, Bill, are you familiar with the the the, the Lorenzo? Wait, 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 wait. So nothing in the human body could be so amazing. You can choose whatever word you want where you'd say there has to be intelligence behind it. Amazingness is not the criteria. Well, you know what I'm getting at. You're playing word games, and that's okay. No, I'm not. I'm 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 serious. Amazingness is not the criteria. Now, if I, we found like in the human body, if we found in a human body a silicone <coughs> mechanical heart, <coughs> I'd say that was design. But your heart's but, not a design. Well, that's 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 a hand waving claim, Bill. Yes or no? Oh, my heart is not a design. No, yeah. no, my heart evolved. As a matter of fact, we can see the evolution of the heart. We, 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 we have examples of it. We have creatures with, you know, proto hearts, et cetera. You like to talk about the eye. Oh, I've got to get closer to the phone here. You like to, for some reason, you still use the eye as an example of design when most apologists have abandoned that because the evolution of the eye is not only well documented, we have living examples of the eye, of eyes in various stages of development. For that organism, but you're assuming bacteria is the ancestor yep. to Beethoven once again. Okay, now now we need to get nonsense. on something here. What? Bill, I it's need to give you a science lesson. Bill, I need to give you a science lesson. Can I have two minutes to give you a science lesson? Oh. Because you... Yes. What? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You make this claim over and over and over that bacteria, okay, gave rise to the whale. That, that, that evolutionists think bacteria gave rise to, rise to whales, okay? And Bill, all this shows is you know nothing, okay, about biology. Because you make this claim over and over and over and over again, this assertion that this is what evolutionists believe, and you never even bothered to check it out. Bacteria belong to one of the oldest domains, okay, of life. With the archaea, they are prokaryotes, okay? The other right. ancient domain of life is eukaryotes. Whales and people descended from eukaryotes, not prokaryotes. Now, uh, as a matter of fact, if, they, if, if the eukaryotes descended from anything, it would have been the archaea, not the prokaryotes. So when you suggest that biologists believe whales evolved from bacteria, that just amazes me that you've never actually bothered to find out what biology actually says, okay? And it's an argument brought up multiple times in a single debate, but you just don't seem to care enough about truth to actually check it out. Now, now that I've told you that whales are not descended from uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, prokaryotes from I bacteria. Agree. I agree. I agree. You agree. So, are you going to stop making that accusation? Okay. Will you will you vow right now never again to claim in a debate or that biologists say that whales evolved from bacteria? I took college biology. I took a course. Did you take a course in college biology? Uh, yeah, I think I did. That was a long time um, ago. Thank you. Forgot. You forgot. Yes or no. I don't remember whether I did or not. Okay. The, the answer is obviously no. I took college biology and they absolutely, the books on the shelf, they call it archaebacteria. That's what the yes, book they were considered both at the same time. Yes. Now you might change, you might okay, change what you want to call it, but uh, what, do you know what the first, did the first life have a nucleus? Yes or no? Do you know? Uh, the archaea are the oldest that we have found and they do not have a nucleus. Exactly. And that the book called it archaebacteria. Yes, because it was considered oh. one domain at the time. But what they found is that 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 even though the neither neither archaea nor uh, bacteria have cell nucleuses, they're actually very dissimilar genetically, and that the eukaryotes are actually more similar to the archaea than the bacteria. So it is flat, flatly false to claim that whales evolved from bacteria. This has been known for a long, long time. I'm asking you right now: Will you stop making that claim in your debates? Will, will you stop making that accusation in your debates? You got to provide evidence, not your philosophy. Are okay, you saying, I will provide evidence. How did the, how did the yeah. prokaryotes get a nucleus? I will pro I will provide evidence. Okay, evidence. Um, yeah. So, so, how did the nucleus originate? The, the evidence. Uh, the the evidence. The evidence that whales evolved from eukaryotes is that whales are still eukaryotes. Whales are still singular, multicellular animals composed of cells that have cell nucleus. That's what a eukaryote is. But there had to be that a first eukaryote, right? According to that, you, what? How did the nuclear? How did the eukaryote get its nucleus? Oh, I don't know. Ah, see, okay. Now you're being honest. Well, well, what's, bacteria, well, yeah. I'd like that from you. Bacteria. Now, let me ask you well, something. Let me ask you something. How did the eukaryote get its nucleus? 
you're you're given philosophy. You're not. I'm asking you, how did the eukaryotes get a nucleus? They never did. Eukaryotes really? make I'm eukaryotes, sure they, prokaryotes make prokaryotes. That's observed. That's science. I'm sure, pretty sure eukaryotes have nucleuses. How did they get that nucleus? They did not. But they have them. Prokaryotes have nucleus? No, eukaryotes. Right, right. I agree. So how did they get the how did they get a nucleus? They were created by your God. Oh, they were and that's all they can make genetically. So they can't go to the 7-Eleven and buy a nucleus. You can't explain how they got a nucleus, and no one in your field can well, either. They ignore it. Okay, Bill, let me respond here, okay? You asked me a question, okay, to which I did not know the answer. And the reason I said I don't know is because I don't have any evidence to support one way or the other. I asked you the same question, and you said, I, I know. I know God created them, but you have no evidence to support that one way or the other either, okay? So the only difference here is that I'm being honest. I'm not claiming knowledge I do not have. I am, not claiming, I am not claiming knowledge that is not based on evidence or reason. Go back to my stone example. I said 99.999% sure, but you can never be 100% sure because you didn't observe it. I'm not are sure you, how, that, how that's are relevant. Are you being selectively you ignorant confident. or not? You seem pretty confident in the absence of any evidence at all. Are, are you being selectively ignorant by saying that I said 100%? I, I never said 100%. Are you being dishonest by accusing me that I did? You just said that. I said you seem pretty damn confident. You oh, claim yeah. to know, you, you claim to know that is true. That is what I said. Is that wrong? Do you not claim to know that it's true? I am fully confident that your eye is the product of a designer with intelligence beyond belief. But you have no evidence to support that. I have evidence that humans make humans and that their eyes come from other humans, that the eye is a system. The systems don't get there by a step-by-step. -step. You don't yes, evolve do, retinas, actually. optic nerves, cornea lenses, Bill eyelids, ear ducts. I believe those are all designs in, in place. Bill, that is just yet another bald assertion that systems you know, cannot evolve step by step. We have lots of evidence that they do and that they did. Okay, no. Lots of evidence. None. SFT, you got different I, organisms sure. with different eyes. SFT, I, I'm not sure this is going anywhere here because he's just oh. continuing his bald assertions uh, and claims that God did it, okay, without even following his own standards, let alone the standards of science. Okay, let's do this. Let's do that. And, and Bill, I, I know you've you've got another round in the chamber, and and so does Cygnus. I'm sure you guys can do this all <laughs> I'll night. I'll let Bill do the last one. That's well. I, I'll let Bill do the last one if I can have uh, give Bill five minutes and give me give, give me a uh, uh, five minutes. Right. Good point. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Why don't we, Bill? Whatever you were going to say there in response to Cygnus, <laughs> save that for your five minute closing. Bill, you're going to have five minutes of uninterrupted uh, closing time. And then okay. we'll do the same for Cygnus. We'll get into uh, some of the questions for about 20 minutes. And then uh, we'll call it a night because I think uh, we may or may not have an after show. So Bill, you have five minutes. If you need to uh, screen share Oops. anything like All that, right. let me know. Yes, I do. Let me... Don't start my clock yet, please. Let me share. And again, Cygnus, we can both think the other guy's nuts. We can still be buddies. I don't want to be buddies, Bill. You kind of offended me very, very early on in our in our interactions. You you you, you actually suggested. I I agree. You actually suggested that I had been sexually abused as a child and that I had bad relationship with my parents. I have never met somebody who said such a thing to me in the first five minutes of conversation and thought, this is someone I want to be friends with. I thought that was really arrogant, rude, and the type of shyster thing I would expect from, uh, say, a psychic mind reader. It was cold reading. It was very, very, it was, it was really bad. Okay. That's not what I said, but let's get to my conclusion. That is, and I have the emails. No, I said you went through trauma in your youth, and I suggested possibilities. Don't lie. I'll bring up the emails. I didn't anyway, say that was everything. specific. I, no, I, I'm not hiding from the fact that I said you probably went through trauma, and that leads to my conclusion. So let me share my conclusion with you. Yeah, let's okay. Let, let, let's go right back to the debate and, and stick. Okay, to that. he's got five minutes. I'm turning off my mic. Okay, here we go, Bill. You got five minutes. 
on your first word. Go ahead. Okay. Let, wait, let me reset. And that leads to my conclusion. And everything I say is with kindness and respect. I've talked to thousands of people over the year, and uh, this is how I reached this conclusion. I've shared this before. There was a man in Indiana. He was convinced he was dead. Everybody tried to convince him, no, 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 you're not dead. So what they did is they hired a guy from Harvard to come out and convince him. So the guy flies out to Harvard and he says, are you dead? The guy goes, yes, I'm dead. Do dead people bleed? No, dead people don't bleed. His finger got pricked. He bled. And he goes, oh, I was wrong. Dead people do bleed. My point is some people's conclusions are not based upon evidence. They're based upon their hypothesis and their worldview and what they want to believe. Uh, I believe my opponent is a brilliant man, hardworking, perhaps probably moral, but I think he is convinced no matter what that there is no God. So this guy's convinced he's dead. This is from experience. This isn't from a book or a philosophy class. This is from talking to thousands of people. The five main reasons people are atheists. Number one, bitterness due to suffering. Many, many people are enraged because of things they've gone through. And truly, my heart breaks for these. I've gone through really hard times, too. And I, I can sympathize with the anger people feel towards God. Some people are atheists because they don't like the Bible's rules. They don't want to be convicted or feel guilty of it. Some people are atheists because of pride. They're extremely brilliant. I had an uncle like this, genius. He didn't think anybody could be smarter than him. Some people claim to be atheists because of peer pressure. They think creation makes sense, but there's so much academic peer pressure, like creation dumb, atheism smart, so they just cave into the peer pressure. And some people, and this was me for 12 years, I sincerely believed I was defending science when I used to defend the theory of evolution. Nobody has studied the human eye, the sun, a whale, bacterium, and said, wow, that did happen by chance. They're trying to justify their worldview. Linus was famous for having a security blanket. To me, uh, atheists need a security blanket, and they make up the belief that everything happened by chance and there is no God. Fill in the blank. How could someone hate something that they don't believe in? Does Cygnus hate the Hindu gods? Does he hate Allah? Does he hate the Shinto gods? I bet he doesn't. And I'm sure he doesn't hate the tooth fairy because he doesn't believe in the tooth fairy. So if atheists really don't believe in God, what are they so angry about? When I was an atheist, I was not an atheist for emotional, angry reasons. I used to silently smirk and think, what a moron for believing in that. I had no anger and rage. You can't be angry at something you don't believe in. And so I say this with a lot of respect, and I know Cygnus doesn't want to hear this. I would say Cygnus has a stronger belief that God exists than most people that go to my church. And how his belief, though, is expressed is through rage and anger. And that might hurt, but I believe that to be 100% true. For 30 years, I've talked to thousands of people. I haven't heard good atheist arguments but I do know there's tremendous pain and suffering out there. So the atheists that are yelling and screaming, I think they have a stronger belief that God exists than most Christians. This is a picture of my daughter when she was two. You can tell by the shirt. That's a picture of her when she was three. She had leukemia. Uh, Bill, Bill, I'm going to uh, pause your timer here. Um, whatever pictures you're showing is not on screen. I think you might have forgot to... Um hit share screen. If you do so now, I can, uh, I'll pull it up for you. Oops. I've got you. I've got your, you, you pause though. Don't worry. You got a minute, a minute and 39 seconds left. Okay. Share. Share your screen. Man, I was on a roll too, bro. That's okay. <laughs> can you see that? Uh, something's popping up. Just a second. It's loading. Mm, I don't see it. Praise. Do you see it on your end? Um, no, nothing's popping up, Bill. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm clicking on share. Share, share screen. 
share screen. Oops, did that show up? Nothing? Nothing on my end. Anything on your end, Praise? Okay, well, I'll wrap up my conclusion. Okay, ready? And I got uh, 3.30. Is that okay? So I got a minute and a half? Yes, minute and a half is what I got too. So go ahead. Okay, so if my screen did work, I got, I got a picture of my daughter when she was two years old. When she was three years old, she had cancer of the blood. She had leukemia. I was enraged at God. I saw 12 beautiful little kids die. I went to a lot of funerals. I was very, very emotionally distraught and mad at God, but I never stopped believing in God because of creation. I learned about red blood cells, red, white blood cells, platelets, bone marrow, and I said, God, I am mad at you, but I still believe in you. And the smartest thing I ever did is eventually I just said, God, may your will be done. Uh, I don't understand suffering and pain, and I do have lessons on that but may your will be done. The thing is, is anger is emotion. It's not a rational denial of God, but I understand it, okay? So evidence for the existence of God, matter and energy, life, the genetic code, design, systems, dogs, urethras, cells, molecules, every atom in the universe is a design in my opinion. Every animal, every part of every animal, the beauty of animals is the result of design, and that requires a designer. So nature has an IQ of zero. Creationists believe there's a God with an IQ of infinity who can engineer. He's a chemist. He's an artist. And the thing to seek. So the question for everybody, is your goal truth or is your goal trying to prove what you want to be true? So once again, thank you for the debate. And uh, it was an honor to be on your show again. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Bill, for your concluding statement. And yes, thank you so much again, as always, for giving us your time for these debates. This has been an awesome debate, extremely engaging, and the the audience is having a great time. Uh, we got some good questions in Super Chat. So let's hand it over to Cygnus. You also have five minutes of uninterrupted time to, uh, for a concluding statement. So go ahead. The floor is yours. All right, first off, I have to say, it's sad that Bill ends so many of his debates in his closing statements by lying about atheists. Atheists primarily do not believe in God because there is no evidence that he exists, or they find the evidence unconvincing. Yet this is never in Bill's list of evidence, of, re of reasons why atheists do not believe in God. Bill, people with strong beliefs do not need to make up lies about people who do not believe the same things they do. Lying is an emotional response. It is not a rational reason for believing in God, but I understand why you do it. Now, got to say here, I think Bill did pretty poorly here. Okay, Did he meet the standards of scientific evidence? No, he did not supply any positive evidence for his God. Every single argument we put forth, every single question, okay, was, can you explain this? Can you explain this? I don't believe this, and I believe God did it. I believe God did it is not a scientific explanation. It's an emotional explanation, okay? No, it does not meet the standards of science. It does not meet Bill's own standards, okay? You can watch his debates over and over again. He talks about observation, okay, and, and being able to see things, but his own standards don't meet this. Now, the problem here is that Bill fundamentally doesn't understand how science even works. Another thing you will see him do in his debates frequently is state what he thinks the scientific method is. In his debate against Summerfield in 2019, okay, he start, said step one is you have an idea. Step two is you test by making observations. Step three, then you reach a conclusion. No, Bill, that is not the scientific method. The actual step of the scientific method, there's lots of them out there, but I found a brief one that's four steps, is you make an observation, you make an observation, then you create a hypothesis based on the observation, then you test the hypothesis, and then finally you draw conclusions and refine the, refine the hypothesis. Okay, maybe you don't think there's a big difference there, but I actually got to see Bill apply his method last week, okay? We were having a side discussion, okay, and Bill used an analogy about goldfish in the tank. And to support this analogy, he said, quote, I'm pretty sure the goldfish in the tank could not see outside his tank due to the sharp reflection. Let's go scuba diving together, and I will stand on the boat while you are underwater and see if you can tell which pictures of famous celebrities I 
things I'm holding up. Did Bill Gilgamesh use the Bill Morgan method, or did he use a scientific method? Bill's method is Bill Signus hypothesis. Hello. What? Well, I, I just want to make sure everybody's hearing. Um, okay. your, your method, you're good. Okay. Bill's method is state a hypothesis that he wants to be true. He wanted it to be true that goldfish cannot see outside their tank because that would support his anatomy. Then Bill looked for evidence that confirmed that hypothesis. Okay, I guess he's called scuba diving. A lot of times when you're scuba diving, you look up and you see the, the, the reflection off the surface of the water. They can't see through the water. And then he concludes his hypothesis confirmed. No need to look any further. Okay. Well, the actual scientific method would go like this. Number one, observe that fish cannot see outside of a tank. Well, okay, we haven't observed fish not being able to see outside of a tank. Bill skipped that step. And anyone who owns a fish tank or has visited an aquarium, you know, with, with outside of fish or aquatic mammals, knows that they can see outside of the tank and react to people outside of the tank. So step two would be to form a hypothesis, okay? Now, there's no foundation for Bill's hypothesis. We were going to go with it anyway. His hypothesis was that fish cannot see outside their tank. Then you look, instead of looking for evidence that confirms the hypothesis, Bill, you look for evidence that disproves the hypothesis. For instance, I thought of archer fish, which are a, a, a tropical fish that actually uh, uh, target prey with squirts of water, and these prey are above the surface of the water. So I thought, well, they got to be able to see above the surface of the water to target the prey, right? I double-checked that to make sure that their eyes, okay, are below the water when they shoot these streams, and sure enough, they are. So I verified my own data there. Um, so there we have some uh, 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 contrary evidence. Then I did an experiment, a simple experiment. I went down to my kitchen, got a glass baking dish, I put some water in it. Okay, I held it up and I looked up and I could see the ceiling. So there's an experiment that shows that no, this isn't the case. Okay, then I finally did some further research and I found videos and photos taken from underwater that showed objects above the water. So after I've like done my test to challenge the hypothesis, I have to conclude that his hypothesis is dismissed. Okay. But I didn't stop there. I thought, does the origin of the light make a difference? Okay, Because we continue on. Does go, maybe in some places, maybe the light's from, from coming from the bottom. They can't. Who knows? Okay. Uh, does the angle of the light source make a difference? Well, it does. And if Bill understood how light, light, how light refracts through different surfaces, he'd know this. Okay, You can see directly up through the water and off to a certain angle. You just can't see off to a side for a long way. So... <laughs> It's, it's, this is the way Bill investigates the world. He has a hypothesis that he wants to be true, and then he looks for evidence to confirm it. He disregards anything that does not. And he did the same thing to me, because he has this hypothesis that atheists are only atheists because they're angry or suffered some sort of trauma. And so that's why he asked me why I, and that's why he suggested that I did. He wanted Five to say that it confirms his hypothesis. We're done. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for your concluding statements. That was a lot of fun. I really liked the format, kept it, uh, kept it interactive and um, fast flowing. I mean, that was a great debate. So we're going to go into some questions. I didn't want, I, I didn't want to interrupt you, uh, Cygnus, in the middle of, of your thoughts there. Um, no, your, last maybe minute, your last maybe minute and a half was, uh, we could still hear you clearly, but it, it, it got that, um, Kind oh, of sounded okay. like you're talking into a My bad. panel. I, I wish <laughs> looks we like wanted to get the headphones now. working. Okay. Looks like it as improved as now. talked though. about goldfish. It sounded like he was underwater. I will have to uh, install a microphone in my PC before I know to do another debate, I guess. Uh, you sound good now, though. So, I mean, whatever. Yeah, um, anytime maybe you sit back or who knows. It's all how close I am, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, awesome. Yeah. No, that uh, still 99.9% .9 of the time we could hear you perfectly. Your mic worked great. So, okay. Uh, well, what I'm going to do, um, because as always, we, we've got questions that could probably keep us busy for another five, six hours. So I'm going to put a timer on for 20 minutes. We'll do 20 minutes worth of questions and then uh, we'll call it a night, guys, because you've already uh, given us so much of your time. So there we go. 20 minutes and I've saved most of them here. So let me go grab them. We're going to start with some of the super chats. Uh, let me see here. OK, so super chat here from Alec Cox. Thank you so much. Thirty dollars super chat. I appreciate the wow. support there, brother. Um, he says. 
well, it's more of a comment, I think. Therefore, when we have comments in the form of Super Chat Cygnus, uh, if it's towards you or towards you, mm -hmm. Bill, uh, feel free to respond any way you feel necessary. So okay. uh, Alex says, why do atheists not know mm -hmm. that there are over 300 Genesis flood legends, not from Genesis, but from all over the world? The Chinese word for boat is eight figures as a character in a boat. So I guess that's kind of directed towards you, Cygnus, if you'd like to. Uh, yeah, respond. I've heard that Chinese glyph thing before, and those have mostly been debunked if you look them up, okay? They're not necessarily uh, what they what they claim to be. Um, you can ask why there are 300 flood myths from around the world. Well, of course, one of the oldest ones is the, uh, the, the myth that's in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is precedes the, uh, the, uh, the, the tale of Noah and is suspiciously similar to the tale of Noah. But the odd thing is that you only find these flood myths around areas of the world that have floods. Okay. This flood supposedly covered the world. You don't find these flood myths in areas with like deserts. Okay. So, um, the flood myths happen because, uh, when, when you, uh, a myth is very often uh, just an exaggeration of something that you experience normally, okay? What is a giant? Oh, it's a huge person, okay? You know, what is, you know, so uh, you know, floods were terrifying things to people that lived in areas that would, did flood. So it is no surprise at all that they would have myths about floods. Okay, I appreciate that response there, Cygnus. Uh, Bill, did you have a response as well? well? I think you missed the point. Get it? Good one. I do believe that uh, there was a global flood. I believe that a civilization started uh, near Nimrod in the Tower of Babel and that the teachings went all over the planet. One of the neatest things is that they instantly began building pyramids all over the earth. So Cygnus' uh, position is possible. Maybe they just all made it up or maybe they're all teaching of a same historical um, event. Where do you get that they built pyramids all over the earth? I have a lesson on that. Well, Guess, what, and this is a fun question. Guess where the world's largest pyramid is? Where? Mexico. Uh, which one? Oh, gosh. I couldn't even pronounce it. But I, I've actually been I, I, I've been up one that they don't allow you to go up anymore. But oh, yeah? I don't know of any that are larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. See, if we were buddies, again, we, could, again, we could share ideas again, with each other. So what? We, they, we know there are pyramids in, in Egypt, and we know there are pyramids in South America. I don't know a lot of other places where there are pyramids. Are there pyramids in China? Thailand, Korea. Uh, I don't know about China. Okay. But, uh, so there are some countries. There, there are, some, there are some, some cultures which found that you could stack mm -hmm. stones on top of each other. That's amazing. Well, there were brilliantly designed pyramids by civil engineers, structural engineers beyond our ability today. Really? So you think maybe aliens did it? Okay, ah, why don't we... Um, uh, real quick, real quick. All right, do another question. I, I, guess, I guess since that was directed towards Cygnus, um, Cygnus, if you want to have the last word on that. No, no, and, they're open. They're open. I think, I, I think we're, we're done with that. Ask no, another question. I'm sorry to cut you guys off. We just, we got a lot. We got a lot. Yeah, to no get problem. Out. No problem. I'm sorry to sidetrack it that way. It's oh, that's show. okay. That's okay. You guys are doing great. Um, okay. So next super chat from George Bond. I appreciate it. As, as I say to George all the time, you're putting my kids through college, brother. So <laughs> uh, question <laughs> is. Uh, for you, Cygnus. So I appreciate Cygnus, you being a good sport because we've got a, a large audience sure. tonight and a, a lot of creationists. So a lot of these questions are, are for you. Um, I kind of gathered that from your channel, SFT. <laughs> okay, awesome. You were prepared. You were prepared. So question is, Cygnus, if you met someone who told you they believed crop circles were the result of nature, time, and chance, what would your emotional response be? Anger, humor, pity? What would your emotional response would be to that is the question. Uh, humor. humor. Okay. Well. Now, now, now if, if they told me that if I didn't believe them, I was going to be tortured in hell for eternity, hmm. I might have a different response on that. Okay. Thank you for that, Cygnus. Let's go right to the next one then. Oh, we wait, got that one. Follow up? Real quick. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. I was an atheist because I thought it was true. I felt the same way. I felt humor towards people who believed in God. 
But I believe that uh, Cygnus's anger shows well, that he deep down does believe because you can't be angry at someone that you think is a nut and completely wrong. Uh, you can be angry at ideas, Bill. And we're, and the actual subject here was the crop circles. Would you? How would you respond if somebody told you that crop circles were the product of uh, chance? Okay, would you? Would you find that humorous? What if you uh, I, would sit, uh, I would sit down with them, respect them, and uh, reason with them, and respect mm -hmm. their belief. Well, the other thing is, I'd have to look at the crop circle too. But again, anger would not be the response I, to something you don't believe in. That's my point. Uh, it is. It is the response uh, to people, okay, who uh, push bad ideas and bad science. Okay, I can be angry at a god. I can be angry at the idea of, uh, of uh, I can be angry at Christian beliefs and Christian dogma. That is not being angry at a God. And you should know that, Bill. That's kind of a really cheap shot to say, oh, well, you can't be, you have to believe in God to be angry at him. Atheists do not believe in God. We can be angry about religion. We can be angry about the impact it has on this world. Okay. We can, angry, we can be angry about things that Christians do. All right. We are not angry at God. And it is dishonest dishonest to make that argument. Okay, Being guys, well, move it on, move it on, move it on, move it on. I'm sorry, it, it was for Cygnus, so we'll give him the final word. Uh, next super chat's from That One Snake. $5 super chat, I appreciate it. He says, question, is, so um, I think this one's going to be for you, Bill, so you get the last word on this one. Is there any <laughs> Is there any historical non-biblical evidence of Noah and his sons, like in ancient legends or myths, if you will? Or, or maybe that, is there any historical? Yes, yes, that's got to be for you, Bill. I, I would it say I have about. absolutely no idea. And the person who asked probably knows more about it than I do. Okay, and as always, Cygnus, if you had a quick response or we can move to the next. Next, nice, move to the next. Okay, so next one here is from Hate Love Nothing. Question is for Cygnus. How do you account for the existence of abstract information as it relates to the possibility for possibility and drive or the lack thereof? Yeah. First of all, I don't see that that has anything to do with evidence of God. Okay. But I'll state my opinion. I think metaphysics is the philosophical equivalent of masturbation. I, 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 I have no, no opinion on that at all. Abstract objects. Get out of here. Let's talk about real things. <laughs> I mean, metaphysics, I engage in metaphysics occasionally, but I don't think it accomplishes anything. Hmm. I, I got to say, well, I love bro. your school, bro. I love your energy. Yeah. I always I enjoy people with passion, even if that wasn't something I was passionate about. I always enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Did you but, have a response to that or we move on to another question? Well, there's a difference between a bowl of alphabet soup and the word Mississippi. The arrangement of the data is information, comes from an information source. DNA, in my opinion, is powerful evidence. There's an intelligence source. Okay, maybe, not. maybe that had something to the question, had, had, had relevance to the question. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand the question. So, okay, well, the word abstract threw me for a loop. Yeah. Okay, moving on, moving on, guys. Uh, good job. Thanks for keeping this Q&A fun. So we've got uh, Jamie Russell, a couple super chats here. No questions, just a couple comments. Um, therefore, I'll read them off. If you guys have something to say, then, then uh, go for it. So Jamie Russell says, God did it in one super chat the next super chat he says hashtag all of it so um Cygnus, do you have something to say to that well bill would you claim that's a scientific response or an emotional response i would say let's see okay 99.9 percent .9 certain that every atom in the universe is the result to design so i'd say he's 99.999 percent accurate okay but you know even in your closing in your closing statement, okay, you said um, everything in the universe is a design, in my opinion. Absolutely. So, again, that's an opinion, okay? Opinions are like mm, everybody has one, right? Okay? So that, that's hand-waving. That's not something observable. That's fine. You are welcome to believe that, but it's not science. 
One thing I like to say is anything that happened in the past cannot be proven 100% scientifically. Okay. You can present a better explanation scientifically. Science will not prove Abe Lincoln was a president, so, but it can present the case. So we're looking at the past. It's really a history question, and we're using science to answer it. Bill, let me teach you something out about, else about science, okay? Science isn't about proving things. Science does not give a crap about proving things, okay? Science is the process, okay, of creating workable, testable models that make accurate predictions and which are hopefully useful. That's all science cares about. Science doesn't care about being, you know, proving things any more than your toothbrush consider, you know, cares about whether your teeth are, are clean, okay? But as people, we should think that the closer a model uh, is to predicting reality, the more things it explains, okay, and the more accurate it is in making predictions, the closer it is to truth. But science doesn't care about proving things. Once something's proven, once something is proven, it's no longer interesting to science except as a data point to use in other models. So for instance, for a long time, we didn't know what the far side of the moon was like, all right? People came up with hypotheses. There was scientific inquiry into what the far side of the moon looked like. Was it the same as the way we see? Did it have more craters? Did it have fewer craters? Did it have larger craters? Was it perhaps volcanic, okay? Then we went around and we saw that's no longer a field of the science anymore, okay? Nobody, nobody is making up hypotheses about what the far side of the moon looks like, all right? That's already been proven. Proven yes, things. Can I get them off because of time? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, yes. um, okay. I, I got to add this. So oh, go ahead, Bill. Go uh, ahead, as Bill. an engineer, science makes things work. Your laptop, your car, your gasoline is because people applied science to that. There's philosophy of science, which you yeah. uh, that you love, but there's applied science that makes things work. Right. There's sailors on Absolutely. submarines right now that would die if my designs don't work. Isn't that scary? $2 billion I, submarine, 100 men. I completely but agree with that. Science, you can apply it to make things work. I'll completely so, agree with that. Okay. Science. I completely agree with that. Look, again, science makes models that make accurate predictions. So the scientific models predicted the designs you created worked. Right. Um, can I tell you a quick story about uh, uh, nuclear submarines? Sure. I, had a, I had a contractor job once, and the head of the IT department, had this um, block of metal on his desk. And eventually I asked about it and he said, he used to be an engineer on a nuclear submarine and that was a piece from one of the engines, okay? I was really impressed until one Friday, okay, at noon, he decided to reformat the kernel of the network server, took the entire company down, okay? The, and and we, were, we were out of business until like sometime on Saturday, all right? And I'm thinking, I hope that part that's sitting on his desk wasn't like supposed to be used for something important. You know, uh, what's this yeah, for? The, right? the idea of him, the idea of this guy being like a, you know a nuclear engineer, just scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Well, I'm not a nuclear engineer, but I agree. I I, I agree. I mean, you use scientific results, okay, because they make accurate predictions, and I assume that you you know assume that those uh, that, that, that the scientific principles are pretty close to reality. Okay, guys, so we're going to move on here. I've got two questions, uh, two super chats from logical, plausible, probable. Uh, both uh, questions for you, Cygnus. So I'm going to read them off uh, right now and take as much time as you need to respond, of course. Okay. So LPP says, um, does dual authentication requires for knowledge? Does dual authentication require is is that required for knowledge? I think he's trying to say. I I don't know what he means unless he's talking about you know should experiment experiments be replicated? Okay. Mm. But again, I mean, this uh, yeah, they should be yes. Uh, so generally, the scientific standard for any for any single experiment is uh, it needs to make an accurate prediction. You know, with it has to be ninety five percent certain that it's that it that the result is valid. Okay. Well, that's actually only one out of 20. And I don't think Bill would design anything on a nuclear submarine, okay, that, well, eh, there's only a 5% chance of it failing. No, that is why we ended up doing replication, because if you do that a couple times, okay, and consistently get um, that 5%, okay, off of multiple experiments from different people, yeah. then um, uh, you have high confidence 
that, uh, yeah, this can go in my submarine. Okay, well, I appreciate that response. Bill, I'll, I'll allow you to respond to the, the second part of this one. Uh, so logical, plausible, prob probable gives another super chat here for Cygnus. He asks, does code mapping require intelligent agency? I don't know exactly what he means by code mapping. Sorry, that's, that's too broad. Okay, no problem. Uh, Bill, if, if you could elaborate or maybe you had a response. Well, I'm with Cygnus, but I would say if LPP says it's a design and information, it would. But just throwing this out, uh, Cygnus, do you, and I, I, it's not a quiz, you're not on a pop quiz. Do you know a lot about information? And information Does that mean I can't win anything? Yeah, you get 10 points, 10 creation points. <laughs> Well, I, I work in information technology, and I work with databases, and so I do a lot of data analysis. Uh, and as far as like the you know the philosophy of what is information, there are a lot of different definitions. Uh, but the one I like is in is signal above noise, which should appeal to you as an engineer. Uh, I believe that's the most common definition used among in, in engineering. Would and what, I, what's I, your question? Would you debate LPP on uh, information? I don't know who LPP is. Okay, a very nice I, guy. I would have to listen to a couple of his debates and see about the claims he makes. Okay, I'll hook you guys up after the debate. Yeah, I, I have to think <laughs> with like I'd have to look and see. Okay, this is a claim I I I I I disagree with or sounds poor to me, and I'd do some research on it and decide whether I wanted to debate him. Well, we'd be happy to host it, and and we can definitely uh, hook you up with some some of his previous debates and mm -hmm. see if that's a debate you'd want to do. So let's move on to the I next mean, one here. If if he's gonna if yeah, he wants to like talk about like Shannon information theory, et cetera, that's not something I'm well versed in. So and uh, yeah, and and I've also seen a lot of people just misunderstand it. So I don't know whether I'd, it would require a lot of effort for me to participate in a debate like that. No problem, no problem. I appreciate it, gentlemen. So we've got um, a couple of just random super chats here from George. Thank you so much, George. And Mitchell, thank you as well, uh, brother. Um, so let's see here. We've got a question from Question Authority and Stay Healthy is his name in the YouTube chat. Question is for Cygnus. Okay. Just out of curiosity, if God directly revealed himself to you, would you become a Christian? Well, <clears throat> you mean if he revealed to me himself to me in a way that I could know for sure that it, he was God, right? Um, which again, th there's obvious problems with that. Is how do you test it? But I'm just I'm not going to take that out. Okay, if God revealed himself to me, first I'd have to see if he was the Christian God. Okay, because that's kind of making an assumption that it's the Christian God. Okay. Secondly, he, he'd have to explain some things to me. You'd have to explain some stuff. Would I worship him? I would believe that he exists. I would believe that God exists. But I could not lower my moral standards far enough to worship the God of the Bible, if that's the way he's described. If he's like, hey, it's me, God, okay? They got all this stuff wrong, all right? Then maybe I could. And Bill, if you had a response, uh, go ahead. Wow. Uh I guess your moral standards are higher than God's. Yeah, actually, they are. Okay. Well, well good luck with that. Well, I don't I believe, believe in, like, in, in raping people or committing genocide or enslaving people. Well, I, I know you're going to have a debate on that that you can promote on uh, slavery. Maybe. But a lot of people say, well, if I, God did it this way, this way, this way, I would uh, believe but I don't believe God is a smorgasbord where we pick and choose and what he wants to be. Uh, one problem with a lot of people is humility, that he knows what he's doing. And I think it's easy to believe that he knows what he's doing because I've seen children born. Uh, I've learned how the cell works. I've learned how the eye works and things like that. And so, Cygnus, I'm with you. There's a lot of things that I just don't understand. The kids so dying of cancer. But seeing the greatness of the design, seeing the wonderful, awesome nature of the Bible and its writings, I don't think it was written by a bunch of sheep herders trying to rip Ooh. off people. I choose at times to just say, may your will be done. It's a very, very hard thing to do. I did it when my daughter had cancer. And 
I just choose to to be humble because Bill, I don't understand everything. Bill, 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 I, I never said I wouldn't believe in this being that appeared in front of me because I disagreed with him. OK, the question wasn't whether I would believe in it. If a being appeared in front of me, OK, and could do all these amazing things, OK, and, and, and have all this knowledge, I would believe that they exist. OK, but that doesn't mean I would worship him. OK, and as a matter of fact, people talk about like I, I asked you to define God and which you never did. OK, I did my but, rebuttal. but I don't recall a definition, a testable definition of God in rebuttal. But OK, designer and creator. I'll have to. What? That's it? Designer and creator. I said it in my rebuttal. Uh, designer, that's it? I mean, he could be a horrible person. Well, what's the topic so of the debate, my friend? Thinks he's a god. Okay. So there, obviously there are more criteria, okay, that you apply to God. I think the number one criteria for God, maybe the only criteria, is he has to be worthy of worship. Would you agree that any definition of a god, okay, should include being worthy of worship? So are, if are it, you able to be humble to God or is that impossible? It, well, I actually am going to be humble around anybody that I meet that like is more intelligent than me or knows more than me or something or has done something which I really greatly respect and I admire. So, yeah, if somebody appeared, if a being appeared to me, OK, that had all those qualities, I would be humble before him. But again, the, the number one quality for a God is that he'd be worthy of worship. And they would kind of run into a paradox. Because when we meet people that demand that they be worshipped, we consider that a character flaw. So, I mean, one of the qualities that I would require of you want God to start is, wrapping it up, Cygnus? One and of the we'll qualities give you the last words. Of God is that is that he not demand that I worship him? It's absurd to me that any any omnipotent, omniscient being would give a crap about like us little people worshiping him. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I appreciate that, guys. You guys are keeping these questions fun and engaging. So, super chat from Chris Keith. Oh, wait, just real quick. You can't worship until you're humble, and I think your pride is going to keep you from humbling well, yourself, so you'll never worship. I, I have uh, well, that's that's kind of an ad hom since it's, I already said that I would humble myself. Okay, and I am humble in front of people that I admire. Well, the creator so, of your eyes should humble it. you. Uh, All right, so we got a super what? chat here. Oh, I apologize. It was your question, Cygnus. So uh, you can have the last word. Go ahead. Right. You know, I, I think I think I think we got it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Perfect. Let me see. I think I. Oh, here we go. Chris Keith, super chat. Question for Cygnus: Can you take a male and female Chihuahua and breed a wolf or a wolf-like creature? Me? No. Can I? <laughs> male or a female, or a female Chihuahua? Well, I suppose it, he said he said or okay. So I suppose I could take a female Chihuahua, okay, and put like oh, in, inseminate it with you know wolf semen, okay, and then take his offspring and do the same thing, and eventually I'd get a wolf-like creature. I, I the, the question seems kind of silly to me. Okay, well let's um, let's move on to these next couple. A uh, couple super chats. S W E, thank you so much. Ten dollars super chat. Not a question. Just says. I'm distracted at the moment, but just showing some support for more debates. I appreciate it, SWE. Uh, once again, thanks for all the support, guys. You guys are the reason why we're able to put on uh, almost daily interviews, debates, discussions. So I, I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Question for um, this one's for you, Cygnus. Okay, so Hate Love Nothing asks, can Cygnus empirically prove that I should not commit genocide against those I deem unfit or lesser. Empirically proof? No, because I actually believe that morality is subjective, not objective. But I can give you reasons why you shouldn't. Was Hitler wrong? I believe so, yes. You yes, believe so? It's, it is my subjective opinion that he was wrong, yes. He thought he was doing a wonderful thing, so you really can't criticize him though, can you? Well, I certainly can criticize him. Oh, so your morality is superior to his? It's. I believe that morality is subjective. Okay. Well, he. So, he, and, and I, I believe I can. What's more, I believe that Hitler was factually wrong. I mean, he considered uh, Jews to be like a a a a, uh, a sub race or inferior or something like that. Yeah, and, evolution and, teaching. And no, that's not what evolution it teaches. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's a uh, very difference. Very. Very few differences genetically between Jewish people and uh, Westerners. 
uh, I believe it was Steven Pinker who said, like, um, the only genetic difference that we seem to find between Jews and Gentiles is that Jews tend to win more Nobel Prizes. Well, and I'm, so I'm sure you've been there exactly before. Wrong. An, an, atheist, wrong. an atheist cannot say Hitler was wrong. They can only say, in my opinion, he was wrong because there's no absolute morality. Well, that's the same thing. That's that's all that atheists can do, too. No, we have the authority of God. Thou shalt not that's murder. Your opinion. That's your opinion. Exactly. It's your opinion that you have the authority of God. Yes. Okay, moving on, okay. moving on, moving on. Good. Like I said, guys, you guys are keeping this fun. This is definitely one to remember. You guys have kept a solid <laughs> audience the entire time, almost three hours. So that's saying a lot, guys. Good Good job. So super chat here from Jungle Jargon, $5. I appreciate it, JJ. Question is for Cygnus. Why do you give credit? Or I'm sorry. Why do you give the credit to mindless matter? for the existence of mindless matter and for the written programming in life? Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's making assumptions. He's, he's engaging in question begging, okay? When he, when he says, like, what, that the, that the written programming of life, that's question begging. Why do I give credit to it? I don't know that I give credit to, uh, to natural selection. It's not a religion. I don't worship it, okay? It's a tool, okay? It's an explanation. It's useful. Uh, and Bill, if you had a response. Yeah, I, I was confused by the credit, but natural selection eliminates information in a population, Cygnus. It doesn't create it. You got to get the ball to the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And yes. natural selection just eliminates unfit traits. Yes, which is very useful. Information. So you, you have uh, new information is created by the combination of gene duplication and point mutations. And then natural selections weeds out those that are not beneficial. That's the difference. Do I, do I, you put your I faith in mutations. I put my faith in God with an IQ of infinity. Well, th that is the difference because we can actually yes. see mutations. We can actually yeah. see. We can even create mutations. We can see mutations. And you can't either create or see your God. So that is and, the difference, Bill. And they lose information. They don't create new information. The natural selection does. The, uh, no, it doesn't. You just said it does, Bill. No, it you eliminates information. You, you you just said it eliminates information. It eliminates. Okay. It doesn't create information. Right, natural selection. But what it does is it, it is part of the process that creates useful genes. It doesn't create anything. It eliminates useless genes. Unfit. I said it is part of the process, along with gene duplication and point mutations, can create new uh, new genes. And natural selection, natural selection eliminates those that don't have any benefit. That's well, you can the, rewind the tape. That's the Go way ahead. biology. That's well, okay, that's the way biology works. You got to get the ball up the hill, and mutations ain't going to do it. Well, mutations, you know, ain't, right. mutations ain't going to do it because mutations only create random information, okay, and they don't weed out the uh, the stuff that's not useful. And natural selection isn't going to do it because it only eliminates what's not useful. It can't create the new information. But guess what yes. happens when you put those two together, Bill? You have nope. new information and a way of weeding out the bad information. Doesn't make new information. It, it does. Evolution okay. absolutely does make back. new information. You're just denying science, Bill. You, and you're hurt. just hand-waving. You don't have a reason for it you, and beyond the fact that it disagrees with you. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Well, it's probably no, not the mutation. Probably not do the not create today, new information to make proteins. It is a simple fact. I it took college simple. biology. You admitted you didn't. It is a simple <laughs> fact. It is a simple fact that that gene duplication and point mutations create new combinations of genes. And it is a simple fact that natural selection weeds out those that are not uh, uh, beneficial. Those are all facts, Bill. Okay, what we'll do is, um, since that was a question for Cygnus, we'll end it there. And I think I got a good uh, super super chat to end it on. Super chat from George Bond says, more pizza and ice cream for everybody. Uh, he said for Bill, but I think um, 
we've all earned some pizza and ice cream, guys. So <laughs> we'll end it there on a light no uh, note. Uh, I apologize to everybody in the chat. We just went for over 30 minutes on questions and we could probably do another hour. So uh, great questions. Thank you for all the super chats, guys. And as always, this the, it all goes to the debaters because without you guys, you know, being generous enough with your time, we wouldn't have a debate tonight. So I appreciate it. Uh, this has been great. A lot of fun. One to remember. I'm going to hand it over to the debaters just for some final thoughts, final words uh, before we shut it down. Why don't we start with Cygnus? Thanks for being here. Uh, and thanks for doing this, Cygnus. Well, thank you for uh, hosting it. And uh, I enjoyed the experience. This is the second debate I've done on YouTube. But the other one was like seven or eight years ago. And the topic was uh, does the Bible condemn rape? And um, interestingly, the guy I debated, uh, when he posted the video, he actually admitted that he lost, which really surprised me. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find his um, his uh, channel anymore. So maybe I'll have to do that debate again. Um, so uh, thanks again for the experience. Enjoyed it. And Bill, uh, again, I, mean, I wanted this to be a uh, Oxford style debate. Uh, I would be willing to do another Oxford style debate where I take the pro side. So that's that's up to you. Okay. okay. Well, I appreciate those closing words, Cygnus and Bill. The floor is yours. Some final thoughts before we shut it down. Yep, well, thank you for the debate. I, I love talking to people. I love people who disagree with me. We're all trying to get through this life together. But uh, I have one question. What is that symbol? Is that Phantom of the Opera? Oh, okay. So my... My, my screen name, Cygnus Estes, actually comes from a, um, a musical score called the Carmina Burana, okay? And um, it was a set of uh, manuscripts discovered uh, that were originally written by a group of monks in Europe who renounced their monastic hour orders and decided to live a life of complete hedony. And so the Carmina Burana is uh, one of the one of the pieces that was put to music by a, a musician named Carl Orff maybe 50 years ago, and Cygnus Estes means swan, and it's used in a song uh, about a roasted swan. So what you see there is actually a uh, a really cool painting by an obscure obscure painter of a of a dead swan hanging upside down against a doorway. Well, have a nice day with that, right? There you go. All right. Can't believe it enough. Actually, I just spilled some milk. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, SFD, for hosting. No problem. No problem. My pleasure. My my pleasure. I think we're going to be having um, either an after show on this channel or maybe John's channel. So we'll announce it before we're done, just for people to have an open mic to discuss um, related topics. Uh, but yeah, really good debate. Thanks to the both of you. I appreciate it. Thanks to the audience for sticking with us uh, almost three hours. And I would say that it flew by. So good job to the both of you. And praise, we're ready to shut it down for the night. God bless everybody and have a good night.